Hello, everyone. Welcome to the episode one of this podcast that doesn't have a name yet. The podcast where we talk about sports, video games, sports video games, and other things. <laughs> I am your host, Austin, and to my right... Well, yeah. ...is your other host. Oh, you, oh you, you're not going to say my name. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. <laughs> Oh, so this is, this is a great start. Um, yeah. My name is Jordan. Um, we have some things to do. <laughs> you can find us on YouTube and Twitch. I am WerewolfFPS on YouTube and WerewolfPVE on Twitch. I was going to say, you're... you're uh, I got that right, okay. You're known by many names. I'm known by many, many things. Werewolf something. Y- yeah. And Jordan, you can find on Twitch... Twitchy Niche? Yeah, yeah. I believe, yeah. Yes, that is, that is my Twitch name. Jordan Nichman on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> because I couldn't make up my mind. So, let's get into the show. It's going to be fun. However, before we start, I want to take a moment to talk about something called net neutrality and why it is important for everyone to understand that you can be educated about stuff that our politicians talk about. Because yesterday, as some of you, or most of you, or, as I also found out, some people don't know, net neutrality was talked about by the FCC yesterday. Now, what net neutrality is, is it allows the internet to be a free source, and the internet service providers such as Comcast, Charter, so on, so forth, anything, Frontier, there's a billion I'm forgetting, or just too lazy to name, from charging us to use websites such as Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter. I can keep going on and on. So that that's the whole point of net neutrality. Keep the internet free. People have been wanting to repeal net neutrality and allow our internet service providers to either completely block sites that they don't like, charge more for the usage of these sites so they have an actual decent usable site and internet speeds or just completely slow them down however unfortunately even though we live in a country where you are free to have your own opinion and unfortunately also have an uneducated opinion or just not educate yourself completely Amen. there were people who a didn't know what net neutrality was or b that the fcc was going to be talking about tomorrow now we don't know the full details of what was said in that conversation that the FCC had behind closed doors. I'm sure soon enough we will know. But we're going to wrap this little rant up with, we live in a country where you can educate yourself on everything. We have internet. Use it. You do not need to be stupid. Being stupid is not a right you have. It is a choice. You have a right to be educated. Use that right. End rant. So we're now... (laughs) We're done with that. I have... I wanted to say that. It was important to say that. We're ending the podcast right there. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Seriously, though, let's get into the real stuff. And this is one that, as a Tigers fan... Oh, across oh, from me, Jordan oh, oh, Jesus. probably deals with this a bit, and I'm Indians fan, and for a very long time had to deal with this. How much is team management to blame for a lack of success? Uh, <laughs> you have some opinions on this. Yeah, manage management in terms of you know front office, I would assume is what you mean. Yes. Uh obviously a ton. You know they're gonna they're gonna decide. Who comes in, who does what, what roles people are going to be in, and things like that. Um, they're, they're definitely to blame. Um, from a, per, from a, a personnel standpoint, if you have the personnel in and you have, like, like say we're talking about sports here, if you have the personnel and they just don't perform, well, then you, you obviously go to the manager. But uh, from a point of just them not getting the right people in to in this case win obviously it's 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 very much to blame and uh like i said like uh austin said here being a tiger fan i i I know all too well um 
He had a general manager for a long time that uh, thought every year the the team was in contention, all sorts of things, and uh, he he just trade away the farm every year. And so you look at it now. We have a depleted farm system with no prospects in it except the ones we've traded when we've been terrible the last couple of years and acquired from other teams. We don't draft well. It's, it's just, just a badly run team. And even with uh, the newer GM and Alavila, it's, it's just kind of the... <clears throat> I'm going to interject here now. I am an Indians fan. I've been an Indians fan for a very long time. been an Ohio sports fan for a very long time. And we have mediocrity outside of Ohio State football. Yeah, Ohio State football is the only thing that isn't awful. <laughs> Decent on a regular basis. Yeah, good on a regular basis, contending to win things on a regular basis. The Indians, for a very long time, were more than mediocre. They were like the Cleveland Browns of baseball. <laughs> they were a joke. Is that bad? Is that bad? <laughs> it ain't good. They were a joke. And their front office, not just the front office, the front office from GMs all the way down to the manager at the time when they were getting to be their worst was, I believe, Eric Wedge. Just terrible. Sad. How do you take a team that went to the ALCS was up 3 nothing to the Red Sox and then got reverse swept. And then you go and finish 15 games behind first in your division the following season. Explain that to me. And granted, we had teams of, we had CC Sabathia who was playing terrible that year. We had Victor Martinez who was an atrocity. And he was the catcher. Yeah, he's, he's a DH now for the Tigers. But Victor Martinez, who was an atrocity as our catcher behind home plate and a complete defensive liability at the time. We had players like Travis Hafner, who, while Hafner was good at points, aging. Grady Sizemore, who, again, points that, you know, could be good. Injury issues. I could go on for a very long time about that 2008 Indian. I could just go on for days about it, but I'm not going to. At this point, at what point does it go from, oh, the players just aren't playing well, to, oh, the front office is not doing their job? Let's fast forward from 2007, 2008 to 2017. My Indians at the All-Star break are doing our top of their division. The Tigers at the All-Star break are eight games back. Uh, I'd have to check that, but that sounds about right. It's in something the, like In the awful American League. Yeah, the American League Central that has no competition. It, like, the Tigers should be maybe a game or two back behind the Indians. You'd think. But, you know, <laughs> the Tigers got swept by the Padres. No, we didn't, no, we not didn't, swept we by did the not get swept. We should have gotten swept, but oh. they they pulled out. They pulled a game out by eight inning. I think was we, we yeah. scored the the. Uh, Padre swept the Cubs, so it wouldn't have been a surprise. We just should have. Oh <laughs> God, swept the Cubs. We were gonna. It was it was all a perfectly designed plan. We were gonna get swept in San Diego, and we were gonna leave Brad Osmus there with it. it it's, <laughs> He was just going to get left. He wasn't boarding the plane. He was. Get, I'm pretty sure he's from San Diego, or at least the California area. He was just <laughs> going to stay back. there. Yeah. Wasn't coming back. No. Banned from, from the state of Michigan forever. But, okay, so the Tigers now, do they have a bullpen? <laughs> is is it is it an actual bullpen or is it just a car, tire fire? It is. Uh, well, they haven't had a bullpen since I've been a Tigers fan, and I think that goes back to like 05, 06, 05 when they were terrible, 06 when they went to the series. Yeah. And they haven't had a bullpen capable of, of closing down games, like a, a rock-solid bullpen the entire time I've, I've watched them as, as hardcore as I do. They're, they're bad. <laughs> and the problem is, 
it's new people every time. Like yeah. every year we get eh, a couple new guys. You know, we get some some veterans. Like we got Mark Lowe when he had a great season the year before. And then Mark Lowe turned out to be a dumpster fire. And then Francisco Rodriguez, active leader in saves. All great. He's a million years old. And then fell off in 2017. Tire fire. He's now not even with the Tigers. Yeah, he's, he, got uh, he got released. Um, Around the time we were going to leave Brad in San Diego. Yep. Bruce Rendon. Oh, boy. He was so bad early in the season that he got sent to double-A baseball. Yeah. Or was it triple-A? I, I, I believe he did get sent to double-A. Yeah, he, I'm pretty sure he got sent to double-A at one point. The freaking Erie Sea Dogs are... The Erie Sea Wolves, yes. Sea Wolves, thank you. They, um... Yeah, yeah, Bruce... The, the, the legend of Bruce Rondone just continues to... <laughs> Uh, yeah not even like it's not even just a plane crash anymore like it's, it's just this this guy went from being this oh great 100 mile flamethrower you know future closer then i don't know if it was a, a year a, a year ago or two years ago now he got sent home from the team which doesn't happen very often you no. see it very often that doesn't and happen you see it almost less for this reason the cited reason was effort level. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. That was, yeah, last year. They felt like he didn't try enough. And if you're a professional athlete, isn't the very first thing you should do is try? Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. I, you're right. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's what's run down for you. Yeah. Like, talk about the fact he can't get his damn 100 mile per hour fastball yeah, in the strike right. zone. 100 miles per hour does not matter if it's freaking in in orbit. <laughs> if, send, if the only sending fastballs to the moon. If there's if the only thing that could possibly hit that fastball is a freaking Martian, that 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 speed doesn't matter. Yeah. That's, uh, all the times they've sent him down, I don't think they've taught him that. Yeah. That's just kind of how Bruce Rondon rolls. And this there's a reason I started with this topic. Is it segues into a few of our other things? Because in early we talked about this a couple of days ago. Tigers are were shopping around Justin Verlander for what cost? Yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah. I've seen rumors saying that the Tigers will only trade Verlander for something of equal to or greater value. Verlander is what, 34, 35? Uh, I believe he's 34. Okay. He's getting to that age for pitchers where your your pitch town's going to go down. Drastically, actually. Uh, not if your manager leaves you in, no matter what. Oh, yeah, because yeah. that'd be the only We aren't going to go there. Yeah. At one point, and I saw something, and like I said, I think some of the Detroit sports outlets are freaking... An atrocity. <laughs> you think that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fox Sports. All their glory. Yeah. Saying, and uh, this was something that was said. Something that was said was, you can't trade Verlander off because of how good he did in the past. At what point can you, can front office or fans, justify saying, oh yeah, this player was good in the past, but. He's not anymore. Um, I will just I will clarify that I am not one of the one of the Tiger fans that clearly wrote that article. Yeah, that just don't want to see him go. Um, because at at some point you do have to admit that this team can't win <laughs> no, in its I... current state. So. I mean, from a, from a standpoint of this guy's been here now, I think he made his debut in 2005, so he's now been here yeah. um, almost 12 seasons. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to see him go. He's one of the better uh, pitchers they've had in, roster, yeah. in, in that ever. entire stretch yeah. ever. You know, uh, yeah. when it's all said and done for his career, career he'll probably get his number retired because that's just what the Tigers do. Yeah. But um, I, I, I don't think you have an option. I mean, he is one of uh, your only good pitchers. One of maybe 
two or three, <laughs> and one of them, the other one of the other ones is Michael Fulmer, and there's no way you trade him away. I mean, if anything, you can't. if anything, you build around Fulmer, uh, build the pitching staff around him. You can't hold on to players from the standpoint of this guy's been here forever. Uh, he's done a lot of great things. I don't want to see him go because that it, it, when you when you do that, you're just you're not being realistic. You're being a fan. And yeah, like I said, when there was a handful of players that have left the Indians, that I was relatively sad when they left because of what they did in an Indians uniform. But at the same time, in baseball is really like all sport, some sports are really bad when it comes to this. Especially like baseball and hockey, because they're so old. At what point, though, especially with baseball, baseball is really bad about it. At what point can you, will you say, oh, you know what? Our team fucking is garbage. <laughs> Our teams. We can't teams win. Good. We cannot win with this current roster. And we'll just, we'll stay on the Tigers here. Your two highest salaries are between your starting pitcher, which, okay, pitchers get paid a lot. Yes. And someone who is a glorified DH, in Cabrera. Yeah, someone who no, really not even a glorified DH, a future DH, a future <laughs> DH who currently is playing first base, even though he definitely shouldn't be, because your DH is Victor Martinez, and Victor had one or two good seasons with the Tigers. Yeah, so and you're holding on to him. Yeah, once he, Victor Martinez mistaken. gets, once Victor Martinez retires, I mean, there's no way you don't put Miguel Cabrera. As a DH, it's, I mean, it's. <laughs> and I'm, if I could be mistaken, Victor has a relatively sizable contract too, doesn't he? He's got a bigger one. He yeah. he did one of the larger ones on the Tigers. Yeah, he's up there. Um, he signed a, an extension a couple years ago. I don't remember the exact term. It was a pretty decent contract for uh, for a designated hitter. Yeah, off of nostalgia. Yeah. I don't know if it was nostalgia at that point because he was only on the Tigers for a couple of years before he signed the extension. Like I don't remember what his it, it, what his first deal yeah. was with Detroit, but it, I don't think kept, it was more after than, they got him for Cle- from Cleveland. Yeah, for for more than like one or two years or something. Yeah. I think he may have signed a two year mm-hmm. deal and then extended. I think they extended it for four more years. Yeah, like all I'm gonna say, you couldn't win with freaking Prince Fielder. Oh God, that's that is. I, Bad I really memories. like Prince Fielder, and I feel bad for him that he had to end his career, cut his career short because of a neck injury. But you couldn't win with Prince Fielder. I can't even say I like Prince Fielder. <laughs> and, I mean, uh, debatable. I, I said I feel bad for him for having to end his career. I liked him when he came to Detroit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. You, let's see, who, all, who else did you have? Um, in, in that, in that general, s- general time those frame? Those two, two years he was... That you had fielder um, for three years. I mean, he was he was there. Uh, that was when that was when we had a really good starting rotation. Yeah, that was like 13, 14. That was like yeah, anywhere from 12, 13, or fourteen. 12, it was twelve you know, and thirteen when, when we had Max Scherzer and yeah, Rick Porcello, who wasn't all that good then, but turned into a Cy Young winner with Boston, and <laughs> um, you know, guys like uh, we had David Price for a season. You know, things like that. Yeah, uh, Longus like. You had Fielder. You had Cabrera. And a yep. few years ago, Cabrera was hitting well. Yeah, I mean, even last year, last year he was hitting well. It's just yeah. this, this year he's fallen off a cliff. You had Ver- and at that time, Verlander, this was before his most recent extension. Yeah. And he was hitting well, or pitching well. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was really hitting well for a pitcher. Yeah. I, 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 I believe of... he started his career like 0 for 30. Yeah. yeah. Um... Scherzer, oh. which you let that get, Tigers let that get away. Yeah, they to do. pay more money to players, but you know we're gonna stay away from that to trade away to trade away Prince Fielder and the cost that that was going. <laughs> yeah, like, Ugh. and you couldn't win with that roster. No, I they thought they could. Yeah, I mean, that was in back yeah. then we had to be one of the slowest teams in baseball yeah uh, you can't you can't win when you can when any time a ball is hit the person on base can only you know like, advance yeah. 90 feet it was either hit over the fence or it was a single <laughs> yeah unless you had someone who could actually run which you know which we had like nobody 
Yeah. Like I remember we had we had a season where I'm pretty sure we stole 30 bases. It, 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 30 32 something like that. 30 bases in an entire year. Yeah. There are players that achieve that. Yeah. This is an entire team over 162 games. Didn't you had Ra- didn't you have Rajay Davis that year? Or no, that I'll was... Say, he would have uh, been one of the faster players. Rajay Davis... They brought Rajay Davis to Detroit right when they traded away Fielder. Okay. And they were trying to get the team faster because they trade Prince Fielder for Ian Kinsler. So you bring in Ian Kinsler, who at that time had some speed. Yeah. Not um, so much anymore. Sign, sign like Rajay Davis, who's one of the faster guys um, in baseball, and then... All of a sudden, you're like, hey, you know, we got a couple guys that can run. They're looking pretty good. And, and, and then when they brought Rajay Davis in, that was when we still had um, Austin Jackson, who had a, yeah. had a touch of speed then. Never ran, never Austin, stole bases, but he had Austin, speed. Austin Jackson annoys me at what he's at. Oh, yeah. Because he's, he's, he's on the Indians now, and, like, some of the shit that he swings that's freaking yeah, comical. He's, <laughs> he's done it his entire career. Like, and I remember seeing it when I was watching Tigers games. And like, how is he swinging at? No. And now he comes to the Indians, and I watch him. Like, why? Yeah. Why are you still playing? Yeah, he was never what the Tigers thought they were getting when they yeah. traded for him. Because he was he was part of the deal that sent uh, Curtis Granderson to the Yankees. Oh yeah, I forgot you guys had Granderson. Yeah, we had Curtis, we had, we had Curtis Granderson, and we traded that away for Austin Jackson. I think we lost a couple other players in that trade or something like, else. It was, a, I think, it was a three-team deal. Is what it really was. Just there are times, and it's easy for me, as not a Tigers fan, to just look at what the GMs do, and it's like, what are you doing? Yeah, for a uh, for I a even five for... year stretch, I think we traded away everything we had. Yeah, like. And now you guys have no bullpen and bull, bullpen pitchers, good relievers and closers are not exactly something that are easy to come by Yeah, at all. Which is why we never traded for them at the deadline, which is why we always traded for people like Bryce, who, you know, got put in the rotation. And I remember when, when we first got David Price, they were talking about, I, there was some rumor that they were going to put one of our starters in the bullpen because we actually had like a full rotation at that time. Yeah. And they were going to put one of the starters in the, in the bullpen. And then, and, and also going back to the rotation, you know, back when there was, you know, Verlander, Scherzer, um, Price, guys like that, Porcello. That's back when Anibal Sanchez was good. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Yeah, when Anibal Sanchez was leading the league in uh, ERA or something like that. I feel like Verlander would be the tail end of his career. They, uh, yeah, they. I remember they talked about it, you know, years ago when he was struggling and he didn't do anything. I mean, he was he was bad. I feel like Verlander would be a very good closer. Pull the pull the uh, John Smoltz, except later in his career. Yeah, I feel like he because he's a good, and he's a decent starter. If he doesn't, you know, give you up, give up eleven runs in freaking four innings. Yeah. But, you know, he's done that a couple of times this year. He's done it, what, three times against the Indians? He's, yeah, he <laughs> seems to blow up against Cleveland. I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, I got nothing for you there. I, yeah. Like, three times against the Indians, 11 or more runs in four innings. Yeah, and it, it, he's done it a couple of times, like, I think, other than that this year. Maybe, yeah. like, two against the Indians, one against somebody else. But, yeah, he's... Uh... He could be... Verlander's a good pitcher. He's either really good or really bad, and he's having I, I, his season doesn't probably look all that good, you know, wins wise, stuff like that. Probably doesn't look all that good because even when he you know pitches pitches his mind out and has a great game and allow one run in like eight innings, oh, we get shut out. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's uh, that's been that's Let's been be the honest. 2017 season for the honest. Tigers. Detroit's where pitchers go to die. Yes, bull, specifically bullpen pitchers. The bullpen especially. Yeah, because oh. going back once again to like 05 and 06, like think about all the people that we had in there um, in the bullpen. That was, I think, 2006 we had Todd Jones as the closer, a <laughs> uh, name from the past. And Todd, Todd, and Todd Jones... I forgot about that name. Todd Jones was Jose Valverde before Jose Valverde was a Tiger, which brings me to Jose Valverde. 
Let's say. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Papa Grande. Um, dancing on the mound, 49 to 49 saves in the regular season, and then choked on some big time donkey dick in, uh, in the playoffs. And is legitimately the reason uh, we probably didn't win a World Series in 2012. <laughs> but, base running didn't help. No, Prince Fielder's, <laughs> Prince Fielder's base running, but the base running entirely didn't help. Prince Fielder's base running was. Oh. I don't know how many times I've watched that since then. <laughs> Just to see him fall flat on his face. Yeah. Five uh, feet before a third. Yeah. And then just all the... Just imagine what was going... Th- I don't even remember who the freaking third baseman was at the time. I guess the, the Giants, The Giants, right? probably Pablo Sandoval. I, I just want to know... Because that ball came from, like, right center. Yep. I just want to know... And I definitely don't remember who was in right, right field at that time. I just want to know what was going through, A, the third baseman's mind, which possibly Pablo Sandoval, before he got extremely large. I, yeah, he was still he was still the panda the, uh, back yeah. then, but he wasn't, he wasn't uh, a freaking, he wasn't Panda Express. No. He wasn't the full restaurant. Oh, boy. And whoever was in right field at the time, I just want to know what was going through their head yeah. when you see Prince Fielder trying to come from first to third. Like, all I'm saying, if I was that right fielder, I would be laughing my... I wouldn't be able to throw the ball. I would be laughing too hard watching freaking Prince Fielder just try yeah. and sprint. <laughs> I remember the time Prince Fielder got a triple in the All-Star game. Yeah. And, and you know, you, he was even surprised at himself. Like, he gets up, and he gets off the ground, gets up off the bag, and he's like, whoa, what did I just do? <laughs> <laughs> this will be the only time I ever do this. Yeah. I wonder how many how many career triples Prince Fielder had. Let's look it up real quick. Um, let me let me look this up. But yeah, as the, what happened, the, the Tigers bullpen has been bad yeah. for a very long time. Yeah, back to the original point. Yeah, it's been bad. So then you go after Jose Valverde, and I think that's when I tried a half a season of closer by committee. Oh. Which never works, and it didn't work this time. One because management and all that were way too confident in what they thought the Tigers had bullpen wise. They're like, "Oh, Joaquin Benoit, Phil Coke, oh, they can get it done." Oh yeah, I forgot about Phil Coke. Oh, don't even. Here, I'm gonna stop you on the triples real quick. That, okay. Um, Prince Fielder had throughout yes. his 12 years. The career. Okay. 10. Ten career triples. He averaged less than one a season. How many? How many of those were probably like? He, there, there was a mistake, but it didn't get ruled an error, so it actually counted as a triple. Probably a decent amount. Probably at least fifty percent of those. So one that you know a faster player would have gotten in the freaking home. Yeah, that would have been an inside or the parker for anybody else. The ball got like kind of. Stuff between freaking the ground and um the fence. Yeah, got caught in the ivy out and uh, yeah, that's it. Cause <laughs> a lot or of something. his yeah, because he played with the Brewers for a very long time. So I believe that. the mo- the majority of his career he was a Brewer. Yep. Other than the two years he was a Tiger. Two years in Detroit. Two or three years in a Texas. Year in te- like a year in Texas, I think. Two years. I think he only played one full season in Texas. Yeah. Because he um. Because he got injured last year, and he and he had to retire last year. I think yep. he played one full season before that happened. I might be wrong. He might have only been in Texas two years. I feel like we've had Ian Kinsler. I think this is going on yeah, year this, four now. Yeah. So he must have had one full season in Texas. in Texas where he actually played. Because I remember he had a he had an injury um, his first year in Texas and hardly played. Yeah. And then he came back. I think for for the second year in Texas, and then last year he got. Yeah. Yeah, like that's actually exactly how. I, I'm. I so yeah. Say so. Like we beat the topic out of this. The Tigers bullpen sucks. Yeah, and it doesn't look to get any better, unfortunately. Well, depending on who's saying unfortunately. I was gonna say it's very fortunate for you. Yeah. Uh, because the Indians bullpen at times isn't much better. Other than freaking, other than Andrew Miller and yeah, I was gonna say you guys at least have like a reliever that's like, a, yeah, a reliever that made the All Star team, which, which doesn't happen very much. I mean, there's yeah. not many, especially because they don't use him as a closer, do they? No, 
They use him as a setup guy. They use him as a depending on who's pitch, depending on who starts. It depends on who starts when Andrew Miller goes in. He's usually like a six seven or seven eight. In a seven, seventh, eighth, eighth inning pitcher. But would you say he's by far your best bullpen pitcher? Oh, by far. Like, who do they? Because they have what? Who, Cody Allen close Cody games? Allen, Brian Shaw. Uh huh. Shaw's not terrible. Not great. He's not Cody Allen. No. But Andrew Miller is the best pitcher. Andrew Miller only, may only have three pitches, but those three cool. pitches. He pitches so damn yeah, well. If, if you got three pitches that you can uh, execute that but that well, it e- doesn't even matter. Either of those three pitches could get someone out. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And part of, like, had Andrew Miller been somewhere else, he would have still been decent. But I think part of the way, of, especially the Andrew Miller legend of late, is how Terry Francona is used. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's As so a, weird because you go anywhere else in baseball and it's, if you, that's your best reliever, bam, he's your closer. Yeah. It's, I've always kind of felt very like weird as, as to how they, they, they use Miller's him. You. I remember um, hearing something, David Ross was talking about it Sunday night, Sunday night baseball this past week because the Indians and Tigers were on ESPN Sunday night ball. Somehow. Yeah. Tigers managed to win that game. Corey Kluber had freaking eight strikeouts and one earned run. Oh, uh, we can pull out the devil magic every now and then. Yeah. Got that Padres voodoo. Yeah. <laughs> Brad caught up his buddies in San Diego and was like, hey, yeah. how do you guys do this? <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the, the Padres. The, the pa- we borrowed the Padres voodoo when we were in, uh, we were, when we yeah. were in San Diego. Yeah. We had a, we had a bet with the Padres. It was either if if we win a game in this series, we have to give us a little bit of that voodoo, so we can at least win one game against the Indians. Yeah. yeah um. But the way teams look at Andrew Miller, opposing teams, I should say, look at Andrew Miller, or how the Cubs did, to be more specific in that World Series, was we need to get runs before day de- or before Andrew Miller comes in, because. Once he comes in, we're not going to get a run. Yeah. And David Ross ended up hitting that home run off Andrew Miller, and that was pretty much the difference. If it Realistically, if it wasn't for that home run, everyone would still be saying, yeah, fuck the Cubs. People would still Yeah. Even now. It'd yeah, be more of, oh, the Cubs didn't win the World Series. Yeah. How many, how many years would it have been? 109? 100, we'd be 109 right now. Yeah. And now... This is going to be a fun one to talk about. We'll get to this in a little bit. The Cubs are, in the way I see it, the Cubs are this or last year's Royals. Uh, <laughs> Except the Royals were slightly worse. World, in World Series fall off. Except the Royals are slightly wor- were slightly worse in eight. Mm, yeah. Would you say the N- AL Centrals were easier than the um, NL Central? Yes. Think so. I don't watch much of the NL Central, but you know, I I mean the AL Central is like how bad they are. Uh, yeah. About a, outside of Cleveland. Yeah, I mean, Minnesota this year is kind of a what the fuck. Yeah, how is I don't know. Well, I mean you what get the it. They're a good young team. They got some good young players, but at the same time, it's still the Twins, and they don't have. You go from win, losing 106 games last year. Yeah. Yeah, you don't. Uh, uh, unless they were just tanking last year, which is entirely possible because just the way teams do it in, in all sorts of sports days. But yeah, uh, yeah, those two, those that Twins team last year was bad. bad. <laughs> they were possibly the worst team in recent memory of yeah. baseball. Yeah, I don't know. Recent if they're... memory of just sports. Yeah, I don't know if they're 05 Tigers bad. Team that lost like 115 games, something uh, like yeah, that. Yeah, I think not. I don't think there is. And I don't think their tank job is is more so than the 76ers. Trust the process, man. So, oh god, I mean, uh, you can't argue with the results. I mean, the Twins are yeah uh, starting no. to win games. Yeah, whether that's because they just turned it on all of a sudden because they felt like it, or you know whether they're actually getting the the talent or. Have have acquired the talent in the last couple of years to, to actually get the job done. I have no idea. I don't know. 
Oh, speaking of trust the process, that was actually a, an accident, a very accidental um, <laughs> segue there. I was trying. I freaking drew a blank on the word. How long, right. like so? I hate using the term trust the process. Because I I love it because Joel, Joel Embiid has talked <laughs> some mad smack to about, a lot of people on Twitter, namely uh, Lavar Ball. Well, so so I liked it. So, trust I don't the hate process, it for that know. reason. I hate it just because like, Mor- like morally it feels wrong. <laughs> not, not necessarily that like. It's just a weird concept. It's a very weird concept. Because at what point do you go from just like, oh hey, we're rebuilding. What's the where where is the difference between rebuilding and sucking? <laughs> like at what pro? Where is the definitive line? I don't even think there is one. Exactly. I is there a like line? I feel like they're both the same thing. And then the second term that I freaking hate is the like if you go off of the process you have the rebuild and then you just have the being like there which i is more or less purgatory sports right. purgatory yes and i don't really like using that term either because again where do we just go from oh they're just kind of there they're at that weird step yeah of not really they're not bad but they're not good they're not good like the Bengals are kind of in that step or they were last year that was just bad because of injury yeah, they did have the Bengals did have some injuries, but they're at that step, like that more or less purgatory step of because the AFC North is not exactly phenomenal. Like the Bengals made the wild card freaking four years in a row. Grant, they lost all four years. <laughs> or actually, no, yeah. Let's see. Now, no, I don't think they've won a playoff game with Andy Dalton yet. No, and then there was two years when Carson Palmer was still there that they made it. Yeah, lost to the Jets, and then they. Oh, then in 06, Carson Palmer, they lost to the Steelers. Then... Of course. What was it? 09 in 2010, lost to the Jets. Then Andy was Dalton's first... Favre Jets? No. Mark Sanchez still. Oh, no. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, no. Um, Andy Dalton's first year, Texans. Second year, Texans. Third year, Steelers. Fourth year, Steelers. All right. <laughs> the Bengals lost to the Steelers a lot in the playoffs. Uh, the yeah. Bengals are at that step of purgatory. But again, where do you go from purgatory to just being like, they're not good? What's the difference? There, there, there may the not be one. <laughs> exactly. Like the, the, the Tigers are a team. They're kind of in purgatory. They're in, they're in a very strange spot right I now. don't really, because I don't want to say necessarily the Tigers are rebuilding. They need to. They, I mean, they need to. They just need to be like, you know, we need to rebuild. They, But they're trying to yeah. be in that second step of fucking purgatory. They <laughs> try to do their rebuild on the fly, or what did they call it? Reloading. They called it reloading, not God. rebuilding. That term, fuck, that, that term annoys me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That term uh, is used a lot in college football. Uh, Alavila, man. He, uh, I don't like, that's another term. I've, I feel like that term is just a, like... We don't want to admit we're going to be bad. That's exactly what it was. Well, that's, what that t- that's how I feel about that the, term. How they wanted to use it is they, they wanted uh, to, to kind of uh, relay to the fans. They were like, we think we have a team that can win, just not this year. Exactly. So like, they're like, we're not going to, we don't think we need to completely rebuild, which they should have done last year because this is now two years. Somehow we... we only missed the winning the American League Central by a game last year or something like that. It's because the Indians kind of once once Indians started pitcher starting pitchers, once the Indians got down to freaking three starting pitchers and Andrew Miller, yep. and then Michael Brantley got hurt. Once the Indians yep. once Indians injuries started happening, as happens with baseball, baseball is a sport where you cannot have injuries. And the Tigers got healthier down the stretch. They yeah, got, you know they got JD Martinez back. He was injured for a portion of last year, and they really uh, they, Justin Upton was able, starting to hit. Yeah, Justin went, Upton. Justin Upton went from a Justin Upton crawled out of his hole <laughs> from a sub one hundred hitter to like uh, three hundred. He was bad. He was he was bad and and you knew that like because you saw him with with the other teams that he played for and you're like you know this guy can hit yeah. and and the worst part about the whole Justin Upton thing was um 
and, and Fox Sports Detroit once again. Oh, God. Um, Take the stick. Oh, no. <laughs> Fox Sports Detroit, yeah. The, the entire season was just, oh, you know, he's just having problems seeing the ball in the American League right now. And I'm just thinking, it's the same damn ball. <laughs> it's... It's it, pitchers might be different, but at the same time, a good hitter just doesn't yeah. not see the ball yeah. because he's in a different league. Yeah, no, I mean he was just he was in a prolonged slump. Yeah, like I mean, say like back to Prince Fielder. Yeah. He was in the NL Central for yep. majority of his career. Then he came to the Tigers and he played. Other than the fact he couldn't run, played decent. Played pretty well. He came from the it's National League. Nice. To the American League. And he was able you know, to see the... exactly what Justin Upton did. <laughs> <laughs> see? Switch leagues. And Fielder was able to see the ball perfectly. Yeah, yeah he saw it pretty good. He, he hit the ball pretty good. <laughs> even, go, even go back to, um, you know, Miguel Cabrera. I mean, he came from the, from the American League. And what does he do? The National, League. National League. Yes, National League. Coming to the American League. And he... Uh, what does he do? He hits a home run on opening day. He saw the ball just fine. Yeah. It's just... That that excuse was comical. They, yeah, he, he's not seeing the ball well. Oh, yeah, they make excuses <laughs> for everybody. It's like when they tried to... I don't remember. I think it was Bruce Ronto, not to go back to that awful bull. Um, <laughs> the Tigers uh, broadcasters on, on Tigers Live oh, said, oh. after Bruce Rondone had been in eight games... In the 2016 season, he had been okay for the first little bit. I don't, I don't know if he had allowed an earned run. Uh, he probably allowed, allowed one, just knowing. <laughs> He'd been pretty solid. Then game eight and everything falls apart. I'm pretty sure he allowed like five or six earned runs in one inning, which yeah. is amazing. I can't even allow, uh, believe that Brad allowed him to stay in the game that long. But Tigers Live post game says, oh, he's been solid all year. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And, and they were literally talking all year as a seven-game sample size up until this game. Oh, he's pitched seven great games, but this eighth one sure did suck. <laughs> this, this eighth one was pretty bad. Yeah, but, but no. That, see, that's what they should have said. You know, was okay. This one sucked. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's been solid all year. Seven, seven games. <laughs> You're using eight games. Seven out of, the, out of the eight as your sample size. What? Yeah. Come on now. I, yeah. I don't he, know. he hadn't even been with the team two weeks, I don't think. He, yeah. He solid all year. Like, yep. So back to sports tur- purgatory and the process. Yes. Let's see. Let's look at some other teams that are in sports pur- in, in the purgatory of they're just there. Lions um, finally got out of it. Yeah. They probably wouldn't be surprised if they go back in it soon. No, just no. In, in terms of Lions history. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I'm trying to think, teams like from the NBA. I don't watch NBA a whole lot. I feel like the entire NBA is in is in purgatory. Pretty much. Because other than like the Cavs, the Spurs, and the freaking Warriors. Yep. Like that's. I mean, just because of the way the NBA. Yeah. I mean, Cavaliers have a clear shot every year to at the very least the eastern conference final it's yeah. just there's no competition yeah uh it's it's straight through and now they've got boston which had a good season last year i don't think boston freaking got blown out of they did they boston really exceeded i think what they what everyone not only expected from them, but they exceeded their own talents. Like they, yeah. like they, they shouldn't have been that good. No. Um. The, and, and, and even with who they draft, Jason Tatum, and um, yeah, they signed Gordon Hayward. Even with that, you don't feel like they're that good. If you think about it, Game Seven against the Wizards for Boston. Uh, if it wasn't for freaking Kelly Olynyk's freaking miracle of a game with like thirty some points and right. Whatever else was on his stat line. I can't remember now just because this was freaking a month and a half yeah, ago. A month ago. Yeah, like almost two months now. If it wasn't for that miracle of a game, the Celtics wouldn't have even freaking played yeah. the Cavs. Yeah, we and went... then the, the, the Wizards would have been swept by the Cavs. <laughs> Maybe won one game. Losing. No, they're going to lose. So? They're going to lose by 50 every game. 
I feel like the Wizards could have won one game. Uh, I mean, I was surprised when Boston won a game. But they changed how they played freaking basketball because <laughs> they didn't have Isaiah Thomas. That's right. Which, I mean, helped them win one game. They, I mean, they played better without Isaiah Thomas. Yeah. I mean, they still lost by freaking 20 in game five. <laughs> Like, they still got blown out in game five at home. Yeah, well. Because, you know, LeBron hates Boston and every chance he gets to freaking... That's why I feel like the Cavs didn't win anymore. I feel like a lot of people hate Boston. Yeah, probably. I'm it's, all easy, good. it's easy to hate the Celtics. Oh, God, yeah. So, yeah, but, probably, I would agree with that. Yeah, the see. entire the entire NBA is in, in purgatory. I mean, outside of... Three teams. Three teams now... Two of which are in the West. Yes, and and it could even be because they were talking um, about the Rockets supposedly we're interested freaking... in Carmelo. Yeah. So you're talking <laughs> for two years. Yeah. So if you if you get Carmelo on the Rockets, then you now have four super teams in the NBA. Yeah. Three yeah. of them in the Western Conference. Yeah. So it's the Warriors versus one of those two teams in the conference finals. And the Cavs versus two, whoever somehow the Cav, gets there. The Cavs versus Air. The Cav, yeah, I mean, it might as well be. Because like, I said they had, they have an easy road to the, to the East final. They have an easy road to the NBA final. It doesn't matter. I mean, clearly, they, they, but they ran all the way through Boston. Yeah. They ran Boston out of Boston. Oh, yeah. The Cavs probably would have had better success had they People played. were probably calling for Danny Age's job. People still are after trading yeah. the first pick to the sixth. Well, round. okay, Dan, the Danny Age thing I can understand because he never acquired a superstar until, and then he goes out and acquires Gordon Hayward and he wants to be ex- <laughs> excited about it. But Gordon Hayward is yeah. a joke. Um, Gordon Hayward is a I, joke. The unfortunate thing is I guarantee you that there are people, there are people that uh, wanted Brad Stevens fired. Which is just <laughs> bad, insane to me. Yeah, like Brad Stevens. Like, all I'm gonna say, you get rid of Brad Stevens. Who are you gonna hire as your coach? Like, seriously. Yeah, I think Phil's kind of it. Oh my God, especially with Phil, Boston. I was gonna say, you think Phil coach for Boston? Considering, considering it's Boston, no. Considering he played for the Knicks. Yep. Coached the Lakers. And the Bulls. His front office experience. At the Knicks. Experiment with, uh, with the Knicks, yeah. Not happening. Yeah. Um, let's see. Most of the NFL is in sports purgatory. Are there yeah, the teams. A- anybody but New England. <laughs> New England, I mean, realistically, all I'm going to say is the freaking Falcons were a fluke. Oh, they so were. Like, I mean, the offense was... Good. I yeah, mean, they have they have a dangerous offense. They have a capable quarterback in Matt Ryan, who yeah. overachieved and won an MVP. They have Julio Jones, one of the best receivers. They have yep. a tandem running game that they can really beat you both ways. Yeah, they have um, Devontae Freeman, who can just run you over, and Tevin Coleman, who's just a scat back that's He's so elusive. Run by you. Yeah. Yeah, but the Falcons' defense was not good. The defense is... If you look... They overachieved... Think about the team overachieving, the defense overachieved. If you look at the Falcons, their defense was not not good. Their defense, even in the NFL, like by NFL stats, Falcons did not have a good defense. They gave up a lot of points. I I heard somebody go over the the stats of... Because it it takes a, a good defense, and it's been proven to win in the playoffs. And... They had, you know, they, they, they said something about no team with a defense raked outside of, I think it was the top 10, had ever made it to the Super Bowl. And the I'm Falcons pretty sure the Falcons, the, the Falcons were like 24th ranked defense. Yeah, the Falcons were, were the terrible. first one that made it to the Super Bowl outside yeah. of the top 10. Yep. And they were, yeah, they were 24. The, the anomaly. <laughs> and granted, like, if you look at the division the Falcons play in, <laughs> like, the NFC South doesn't have defense. Is that a, is that a division? Yeah, right. Is the NFC South a division? The NFC South doesn't have a defense. It's let's let's see who can score more faster. Right. And that's like I mean, that's kind of more. I mean, the Saints when they won the Super Bowl, they had a decent. Yeah. The Saints were 
ten. <laughs> they were they were the tenth out of the top ten. Right. <laughs> so I mean, still a decent defense out of thirty two teams. Yeah. But come on, it's like the NFC South is a who can score faster. The the NFC South is just you know like the Falcons were kind of a a fluke. I think I don't think they're going to be there this year. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't even think the C. I think the NFC representative again, like I did last year, will be the first. Um. Yeah. It'll either be the Panthers if Cam Newton has a good season, stays healthy, because uh-huh. they still have the Panthers still have a good core roster. Yeah, that's why they, I was so surprised that the Panthers just kind of fell apart last it's year. Like I mean, that's what happens when you don't have a healthy quarterback and right. healthy players, or the Packers. I still think the Packers do have the best shot. Yeah, for whatever reason, Green Bay, they... they Well, of course, because they just run through the NFC North every year. Being a Lions fan, <laughs> I know all about that. Um, even when it seems like other teams may have a chance, uh, they they find a way. Yeah. Two out of the last three years, we the Lions have led the division and had mul- a multi-game lead in the division. And then... Blew it down the stretch and backed into the playoffs, and that's yeah. what they did again this year and handed Green Bay the division, really. Yep. Yeah. But uh, but Green Bay, when they get to the playoffs, they just don't, yeah. they don't get it done lately. And whether that's Mike McCarthy or, or just the roster they got out. I, I feel just... like part of it could be roster. But I do I do really think that, like again, the Packers are my favorite from the NFC. I mean, the Cowboys' potential, if you go off how the Cowboys played last year, there's that yeah. potential. Um, I, th- I, don't, I don't think the Cowboys, I don't think there's any way they played. No, I don't see it. After um, after an entire calendar year of film now of Dak Prescott and Zeke Elliott, I don't think so. People are gonna figure him out. I don't think so. Um, we still don't really know how Philadelphia will do. I mean, Carson came and then he went. <laughs> that's a good one. I like that. I mean, New York. If New York, if the Giants somehow manage to make the playoffs, there's they're a threat to freaking. <laughs> I don't know what it is about the fucking Giants in the postseason. Yeah. If they make the freaking postseason, they somehow win a fucking Super Bowl. Yeah. By some miracle. I don't know how. They and, do. Uh, I'm sure Patriots fan was excited when and just losing their mind when the Giants lost this last this last year in the playoffs because yeah. if they make it to the Super Bowl, they're <laughs> like the greatest Super Bowl comeback of all time doesn't happen against the Giants. Yeah. Like I don't know what it is about the Giants. Oh, let's see who else we got from the end. It's like the it's like the the Royals and their damn oh devil God. magic. Yeah, let's see who all um NFC Redskins <laughs> Redskins are a joke. That's funny. Uh, um, I, how a team quarterbacked by Kirk Cousins can nearly make the playoffs is got me. I I got nothing. You like that? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Let's see NFC South again. <laughs> yeah, that. like seriously, the, is, the, is the NFC South a real division? The Atlanta Falcons are gonna have the biggest hangover from that. You know that. Oh well. god, yeah. I still think, like I said, my favorite is still the Panthers. I think that I mean, or the Buccaneers. I think the Buccaneers could. Buccaneers could surprise some people. We're doing we we are doing way too early freaking <laughs> predictions for the NFL. Yeah. No, we're gonna have to do an NFL prediction show. I know I wanted yeah. to do one on my uh on yeah. my Twitch stream, but um let's see what else we got. Like I said Panthers are my favorite. Yeah. Um these are just highlight predictions real quick too. Let's see. Um Falcons I don't think it's gonna happen. The Buccaneers could. I think this is the Buccaneers year in the yeah. NFC South. I, um, I, and absolutely. Saints. I don't think good old AD is, is going to save them. I mean, no. a running game, that's not what that team needed. They I, needed they needed a team around the offense. They needed yeah, a defense. Like, Need more offense. Getting, getting Adrian Peterson is not going to help. And when you have Drew Brees. And, yeah, and, and taking potential plays away from Drew Brees. Yeah. <laughs> if, you're, if anything, you can't have a superstar at both positions. Get get rid of the running back and just put another wide receiver back there behind yeah. Drew, next to Drew Brees. I mean, 
run everything out of the shotgun, let Drew Brees touch, th- throw the ball 200 times a game. And that's why <laughs> Drew Brees throws for like 5,000 yards every damn yeah. season. Because he's the offense. They have no running game. Let, let Drew Brees throw a freaking 200 play every play. Yes. The Saints run, what, 90 plays a game? 100 plays a game, something like that. that. Let him throw all 100. Just Actually, let him, let him throw 99 of them. Let him throw 99 of them. Throw a run play in there midway through, the, like, in, at the beginning of the first half. Yep. Or at the end of the first half. In, inside zone. Yeah, in, inside zone <laughs> when you have a free, like... <laughs> Run into the into the uh, into the line and just kind of hope you gain a couple. Of yards. Yeah, like they'll have the fr- whatever defense oh, no. will have freaking a prevent D back there for Drew Brees. I figured inside it zone. out. I figured it out. Ninety nine plays are gonna be passes. The hundredth play is going to be a quarterback sneak. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, you'll have you'll have a prevent D and then yep. Drew Brees just freaking. Runs for 60 yards. It's a 60-yard oh. rush. And they'll, and they'll be like, wait, what? I want to try that in Madden now. <laughs> Close game, prevent defense, last play of the game, quarterback sneak, see if I can run at home and get the blocks. <laughs> it's pos- you, would get, you would get some decent yards out of it. I, I, it would have, like, decent yards, yes. You'd have a lot of time for people to set up blocks behind you. Yeah. That, that could work. If we figured out how to how to... Win Madden games. Yeah. Win football games in general. Right? Um, let's see. So there's the NFC South. Yep. Um, we already went through the East. Yep. North went through the West. The West. My predictions for the North are a little bit different than yours. I bet. But it, it may be... As the, a Lions fan. It may be being a fan, but I don't think it is. I think... I don't think Green Bay improved, and I think the Lions did. I mean, they did yeah. get Martellus Bennett. Yeah. But... Uh, I still I think, think the I think the Lions are finally just, gonna they're gonna erase sixty years of terrible history and they're gonna and they're gonna win a playoff game this year. They're not probably not gonna win the Super Bowl because let's be honest, New England's gonna win the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Um, for your sake and your sanity, I hope they do. I, I oh. but I don't see it. I literally bought a shirt at at Meyer the other day. Oh God. Yesterday, in fact. Okay. That I says. I just want, or Detroit, come on, Detroit, I just want one before I die with the picture of <laughs> Lamar D. Trophy on it. I'm not kidding. They have those at our Meyer right now. Really? They're beautiful. Yeah. That's and I'm like, And I'm like, this describes me as a sports fan more than anything, any other shirt that I've ever seen. I must have it. Not your freaking, what, Ian Kinsler Red Wings jersey? The Brandon Andrews Red, 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 Red Wings jersey. jersey. Not that one. No. That, uh... <laughs> I want to know who fucked that up. Who I should wear that. Up. I should wear that on stream today. <laughs> I want to um, know who fucked that printing up. That's... I don't even know if it's somebody fucked it up or somebody loved Brandon Inge so much that they that they made that like custom. How would, would you spend money on that? Like, I don't know. You that Brandon that's Inge. how you know you make too much money that you can make Brandon Inge Red Wings jerseys. Because I didn't think Brandon Inge was that good, was he? He, uh, now see, I am one of the very few people, and this is almost kind of half why I bought the jersey. I bought it on eBay, just so yeah. you know. I, I was not yeah. the original owner I know of the this story jersey. behind this one. Yes. Um, this I, am, right now. I am one of the only people that liked Brandon Ange up until the very end. Okay. He, throughout his whole career in Detroit, I mean, he, he was... He was what Andrew Romine sort of is now, but I think he was a little bit better than Romine, and he played a little less positions. You know, when he got drafted, he was a catcher, and then he got moved to third base when we got Pudge Rodriguez, and then when we shipped Pudge out of town, he was our catcher again, and then he played outfield for a little bit. Yeah, I remember him being like a freaking utility player. The only thing, well, yeah, I mean, that's what really Brandon Inge should have been, was a utility player. The problem was for, like... 11 of his 12 years or how many seasons he played here that's not what he was he he was a starter wherever he was yeah the year that the year that he was a catcher he was our backup catcher behind uh pudge rodriguez yeah um and then we ended at third base yeah uh, yeah started at third base we didn't have a backup catcher i think we traded or, or vance wilson i think was our backup catcher at the time and he got hurt and so we needed a backup catcher they put brandon inch back there and then he ended up being our starting 
catcher the rest of the season because we because we traded away Pudge. But I mean, he just did everything. Yeah. Defensively, he was great. He never really figured out the bat. But I was one of the few people that that kept Brandon Inge. I wanted to keep him on the roster, and even when they released him, it was just like it was it was another one of those things where it's just kind of sad because at that point, believe it or not, he was the longest tenured Tiger. Yeah. It was him and Justin Verlander. That, yeah. I mean, that was it. It was those guys, and that I do remember. I I kept I I, I didn't want to see Brandon Inge go. So yes, back back to this jersey. I I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. I I would love to. I I got a. I better go back in my email history, my eBay history, or something. Find ask the the original the, seller, the seller like what why? what was the story behind yeah, this? Where did like, you? Like, I know like you bought it on eBay. Yeah. It's like how oh, like a novelty thing. Yes, that's exactly what it was. And like I just it was so interesting. I couldn't not buy it. Yeah, one of those things. Yeah, like the drinking one that you bought on on Prime Day. That comes. That is being delivered to me today. Nice. I am so I excited about one. that. I need. I don't care how much they are anymore. I just need to fucking order one when I get home from work tonight. These are yes. They are. It I was is, looking at it. It is the Das Horn drinking vessel. It is called. It is the most beautiful thing on earth. It's been in my wish list for a long time. And just literally a couple days ago on Prime Day, I it was like ten dollars. I was fourteen dollars. I'm like, this is the time. It's happening now. I want this. Das Horn is coming home. Horn. Das Horn drinking vessel. Some of the Amazon reviews. Oh, I'm sure they're fantastic. Guys, I'm gonna read an Amazon review here on podcast. Oh, great. This one is of them was the great. yet to be named podcast. Yes. We'll come up with a name after the fact. Um, hang on, let me find it find it oh here we go here it is i'm gonna leave the name out of this this is a very very long read oh boy i'm gonna actually synopsize from this where do i want to start it was a quiet night a lot like this when i poured my first beer (laughs) this person wrote a freaking essay (laughs) poured my first beer into das horn i took a few sips man this the beer tastes way way better in this However, all of a sudden, I hear a bunch of pounding on my door. Of course, I opened it, and there were a ton of beautiful women at my door waiting for me. They heard about me and my drinking horn and wished to drink from the horn of glory. (laughs) Being the gentleman that I am, I let them in and out of the cold, and they began taking turns drinking from my illustrious horn. I didn't know people used the word illustrious anymore. (laughs) I didn't know people. I, I figured there were people who didn't know what that word even meant. However, this soon was interrupted by another knock at the door. I thought it was the cops since we were being loud, but instead it was DJ Khaled. (laughs) It it keeps getting better. It keeps getting better, believe it or not. I was so surprised that he, too, heard about me and my drinking horn. And he had brought additional women to party with me, and he would supply the music. Of course, all are welcome at at the keg of glory that is my place, so I let them in. We were partying, partying it up, drinking from Das Horn, and listening to some sick beats from DJ Khaled. And I'm not really a big T- DJ Khaled no, fan, me, me especially some of his newer stuff. Yeah, some of his older stuff wasn't isn't bad. Only song I'll listen to is uh, "All I Do Is Win" because yeah. the Red Wings play that after wins. <laughs> I'm pretty sure how everyone often do, does. How often do they play that now? Then uh, 16, 17, <laughs> not that much. <laughs> Little side joke there. Rip. Uh, but of course, that got interrupted by another knock. This time, it was the cops. However, they weren't there to arrest me. They were here to sweep the area as Barack Obama himself heard there was a Das Horn owner around and he wanted to challenge me in a chugging contest. How much do you want to bet that Barack Obama actually owns a Das, das Horn? Das Horn. I put money that he does. I, I would let's, say let's get Das let's get, let's get Das Horn on the podcast. I, That's what I was I saying. Mean, Next week's podcast, we absolutely we can have a Das Horn podcast. Yeah. you got to order yours. Yeah, I'll order mine. Mine will be mine will be present. Let's get Barack Obama on the freaking on Discord and see if he has a Das Horn. Yeah. Um, who am I to decline the president in a Das Horn chugging contest? That's... So Obama and the Secret Service I'm came down. right in. We poured the fi- this is where it gets really good. We poured the finest natty ice. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. 
<laughs> You're ruining the Dots horn. No. We poured the finest natty ice in our horns and proceeded yeah. to chug. You're tainting the horn. Right. But the president got got a five-second head start because the Secret Service blocked me. However, I raced back from behind and beat Brock by two ounces. I almost got arrested by the, by the Secret Service for beating a sitting president. But Bo gave me a pardon on the spot. What a great night, and I owe it to Das Horn. How could you not buy something after reading I, that review? I wish I would have read the re- reviews beforehand. I would have bought 10. <laughs> you would have bought 20 of them. You would have bought Amazon out. I would have bought, I, yeah. I would have bought every single Das Horn. In existence. Yeah, on Amazon.com. We poured our finest natty ice. For a discounted price. Yeah, finest natty ice. All I'm going to say, if you can ever put, if I ever find out you put natty ice in your Das Horn. My Das Horn will have exploded. Yeah, your Das Horn will. I feel like the Das Horn would explode. So there we go, oh, guys. That's God. that's a review from of Das Horn. If that doesn't make you want to buy Das Horn, you're not a real human. Uh, by the <laughs> way, we have breaking MLB news. Oh, perfect! I was breaking looking for breaking news. MLB news on the podcast, and it's it's pretty big. Okay, we have the first blockbuster trade in MLB of the in, year. Of the year, it is not the Tigers. Okay, it is the Cubs. Okay, and the White Sox. You don't hear those names in the same sentence no. too often, unless they're playing each other. Cubs get left-handed pitcher Jose Quintana. From Ooh. the Chicago White Sox for Ooh. outfielder Eloy Jimenez, Pipeline's number eight prospect. Uh, Jimenez is right-handed pitcher Dylan Cece. Cece? We're going to stop you real quick for one okay. second. Please tell me it does not say cash considerations are player to be named later. <laughs> Please no. tell me it does not say thank you. No, no, no. There are no, there are no uh, player to be named later as a cash consideration. Thank God. Uh, first baseman that. Matt Rose and infielder Bryant Flaty. Obviously, the bigger piece that's going to uh, the White Sox is this Jimenez guy, who's the eighth best prospect in baseball right now. And the but... other two are probably the equivalent of a freaking bag of baseball. Yeah. <laughs> which is also oh, a player, no. which is essentially also a player to be named later or cash consideration. Yeah, I fucking hate. Them. We might as well have had like. Um, uh, bag of uh, if this trade right here. Those those guys might as well be a bag of pucks. Yeah. It's a baseball trade. Might as well be a bag of hockey pucks. Yeah. Let's be honest. Who are like I've never heard of those second two. The third guy. I've never first, heard of all three of them. The first guy I think I've heard of once. Like on freaking MLB Network. I mean, yeah, I've probably heard his name before. But the other two, like. Yeah, if there was no additional information attached onto them. Are you giving them? Are you giving them tennis balls? Are you giving are you giving them some deflated footballs? Right. Like, come on. Like, you may as well give them cash considerations or freaking whatever. Not the point. Um, where were we before we got on Das Horn? I don't know. I can't remember where we were. Oh, I remember. We're we're new to this. We were talking about freaking um NFL predictions. Yes. We didn't even get to the AFC yet. We, la- we I think we even... left off on the NFC North. Yeah. So right. your prediction is the Packers. Yep, yours is the Lions. My prediction is the Lions. We'll lock these in later. Yeah. Later in the later year. In the se- later, we'll do that in August. We'll do that in a month from now. NFC West. The NFC West is the weakest freaking division in all football. I mean, look. You have the Rams. You have Are the Rams they? and freaking. Yes. You have the Rams and 49ers, for Christ's sake. Yeah, they're bad. I mean, the Rams... And then you have the Cardinals. The Cardinals, which... nobody knows what the Cardinals are. Exactly. Because Carson Palmer's way too old now. Yeah. Um, it's it, it's it's kind of like... Say, the Rams and 49ers are going to be, be competing for third. Yeah. It's like... Seahawks are my pick. What, are, what division are the Patriots? AFC South? East. 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 What fuck am I thinking? So it's it's like the AFC South, which you can play the games, you can go all season, you can tell yourself if you're a Miami Dolphins fan you're or the AFC East. Uh, or yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can oh, fucking hell, man. That's um, hard. yeah. So yeah, AFC East. East. I have it in my brain now. So it's like you know, being a being a pa- or a, a Dolphins fan of that division, you got no shot of winning anything. 
They have a better shot than anyone else in the AFC West does, though. Do they? I think they do. I is do. it tougher to get through the, the Seahawks than it is the Patriots? I... Because, I mean, so, I mean, clearly... I, I would say yes. 49ers, Rams, those are both dumpster fires. Yep. Um, Arizona, nobody really knows. You know, they got good coaching. They have an aging but veteran quarterback. And I they think, have one of the best running backs in football. I think that any team in the AFC East would have a better chance of winning the AFC East than any team in the AFC West would. That is probably true. I think the Dolphins, if they, so that's my if they relocated... <laughs> if the Dolphins relocated to freaking L.A., get a third team in there. Yeah. Then, yeah, maybe. But. Listen, my my pick for the AFC or the NFC West, who do you got? I think it's Seahawks. Seahawks still, not too. Even, not even. Because, like I said, I think, the freaking Se- I think the West is the easiest division. I think the Seahawks will probably sweep their division. Uh... Or at least... The Seahawks will at least win four out of five, or five out of six. I don't know, man. Them, them Rams, they always find a way. <laughs> I think five out, they'll win five out of six. Or they will lose only one. The only game I think the Seahawks might lose in their division is at Arizona. Yeah, that's uh, The only game I'd give them a even a game. shot of losing at their division. Yeah, because there's no way. I mean, the 49ers are just still so bad. I yeah. mean, who are they going into the season with their quarterback? Unknown. Blaine, Blaine Gabbert? I still think, yeah, I think it's Blaine. Blaine Gabbert? Yeah. So let's flop over to the AFC. We'll start with the West East Patriots. Who's, yeah, whose uh, prediction is already known for me, uh, the yeah. uh, New England Patriots. Patriots. I think the Dolphins will come in second and have a wild card. Yeah. They're, think, uh, they're a good team all of a sudden. I think the Dolphins will make the playoffs. And possibly win a wild card game depending on who they play. If they just had it, back man. Yeah, Ryan. I feel like Ryan Tannehill. Bless his heart, man. He hey, tries. He he does. I I mean he he's got he's got the weapons to do so. I think. But he's just not great. Now they have a a, a running back in Jay Ajayi, who can get things done. Yeah. They're they're, so they're he stays healthy. They're a decent team. As long team, as he doesn't become a Ryan, slight, another Peyton Hillis. Oh. So yeah, like I said, we'll just move, unless you have anything else to say about the Dolphins. Ah uh, no. Okay. No. So both... other than Nadama and Sue can go to hell, but that's. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say yeah. Um, AFC North, I have Pitts. Even as a Bengals fan, Pittsburgh is going. Either. I don't know, man. I'm I'm thinking this is the Browns here. <laughs> no. <laughs> no Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh is uh <laughs> clearly the best team in that division. Yep. I think. I've seen people predicted Ravens for Super Bowl champion this year. No. And I didn't even know that they did anything like that sizable, that they were so. st- substantially better. I don't remember. I don't. I, 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 they didn't make the playoffs last year. No. I don't think they're all that much better than they were a year ago. I think the only. I mean, real, if there's any team that can challenge Steelers, it would probably be the Bengals. Yeah. 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 That's all I can say, as long as they can stay healthy. However, I think the pay- the Steelers are the only team that have a even remotely close to a chance challenging the Patriots. Yeah, that's in the uh, playoffs. That's it. Last couple times they faced each other in the playoffs, it's not been much of a challenge. But no, yeah, I mean Pittsburgh. I still think Pittsburgh's the only team that can even remotely close. Pittsburgh's to got a pre- a pretty well rounded team. I mean they yeah. got they got good quarterbacks. They got. One of the best running backs in football. Defense is good. Wide yeah. receivers are good. Yeah. I mean, they have almost superstars at every offensive position. Yeah. Um, AFC East, not East, South. You got me fucked up now on yeah. it. Yeah. AFC South. Let's go. I don't even remember who else in the South other than the Texans. I freaking hate the Texans. Texans. Uh, we have Houston, Tennessee, Indianapolis, and Jacksonville. Uh, I can definitely tell you who's gonna be in last. Jacksonville. Um, Depends on who's quarterbacking. Um, no, I, see, I always forget that Houston's actually good. Like De- dependable. Sometimes they they they, they have a, a a great defense and they have good playmakers everywhere else. They just haven't had a quarterback. Yeah, 
A millennium. I I make this mistake every year when it comes to the AFC South. You pick the Colts? I always picked I every year for the past four years, five years, I've been saying the Colts. Still thinking of the Peyton Manning Colts. No, not even anymore. Andrew Luck. I really I mean they're 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 a they're a team that you look at and they're like On paper, this team can win some games. Yeah, and then every mm, year they lose something happens. Yeah, they either injuries or they just can't get it done. One of the two. Andrew Luck gets hurt. They run inconceivable fake punts. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, they do. So I this might be the first year this is the first year and I will probably flop on this by in a month by the time we get to freaking yeah. Our official predi- predictions. Right now, early, I'm saying Houston. I can't say Houston because I, I am uh, not a big fan of Sean Watson. I don't yeah. think he's as good or going to be as good as everyone thinks he will in, in the NFL. Um, I will go with the Colts for now. That is my er- way too early pick. And then you also have the fact that Tennessee could possibly I mean, Tennessee. Mariota, yeah, all those guys over there. Actually, yeah, there. I'm already switching mine, and I'm saying Tennessee. Titans. I'm already switching mine, and I'm saying Tennessee. And I'll probably switch between the Colts, the Titans, and Houston. I'll stick I'll stick with Andy for now, I think. Yeah. Uh, by, by the time we get to actual predictions in a month, I will probably switch again. Oh, yeah. Um, and then rounding out predictions, let's go to the AFC West. With Kansas City, Oakland, Denver, and LA. LA is finishing in the bottom. Already, guaranteed, <laughs> already calling it. Yeah, the other the the other LA team. The Chargers. Yeah, we, we gotta get used to this. The Chargers um, are finishing at the bottom. Um, oh yeah. Oakland, I, Oakland's my winning win. Winning the West. Oakland looks really, really good. Yeah. And I think they're going to be the team that I think Pittsburgh's probably gonna make the playoffs, but I think they're going to to lose. Yeah. Um whether it be to Oakland or somebody else. My um, AFC Championship game right now would be Pit, uh, um, um, uh, Patriots, New England, and, and Oakland because they're, uh, those are the two best teams, I think. Oakland was good last year. They, if you're a yeah. Raiders fan, how upset are you last year? When you, had, when you guys had a great season, Derek Carr gets hurt. Like, you're stuck with Connor freaking Cook in freak a playoff injury. game. Freak injury, too. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, freak injury. Like, Oakland is my pick to win. If any, and I could see maybe can't, like, Denver's not going to do anything. Yes, Denver finished 9 and 7 last year, but again, Denver was three games back of Oakland and Casey. Yeah. Kansas City will probably make, the wild, make a wild card spot. I hope they do. I like him. I, I like, think I've always liked Andy Reid. I think Kansas City could make a wild card spot. <clears throat> Other than that, yeah, like Oakland's probably gonna win. I don't know, Felipe Rios in L.A. Man, I, he he could <laughs> no, he could rally yeah. the troops. <laughs> so there's that. We aren't even gonna get to freaking NHL or NBA picks because we might as well. Yeah, I mean we're gonna hold off on those because. They're still two and a half months away. Yeah, we just we just finished those. Uh, the, yeah, um, second half predictions. We'll, oh, fair. actually, we'll do that at the end. We have one a few other things I want to talk about. Let's go back to when we were talking about the process. Oh. How long should a fan trust the process, in your opinion? I just want to highlight this real quick because I we forgot to get to that. As it goes on, it becomes more and more difficult. Um. Like if the Lions front office tried to sell me that uh, they were tra- you know, just trust the process, you yeah, trust the process for sixty years. Yeah, try doing that. You know, at what point is it like what we were talking about? You know, when does it become trusting the process or whatever? Or you're just bad. Yeah, what, like that's why I don't, especially like my t- two of my or well three because we'd also said reloading too. Yeah, my oh. three worst or least favorite terms. In sports, when it comes to just like rebuilding, more or less, yeah. or just team management is reloading, because I think reloading is a set is the team saying, you know, we're, we're not surrendering, but we should. We're gonna be bad, but they don't want to say we're gonna be bad. It's their way of working around. Hey, we're gonna suck this year. Yeah. Um, 
towards purgatory because where is the line of you're okay, you're at that point of like you just need a couple of pieces and then you'll be good. Oh. And you're just bad. And then trust the process, that phrase of the process. Like well, I don't I thought want... I thought number three was a player to be named later. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to those. Um yeah, player to be named later in cash considerations. I wonder if there's like a document or an article somewhere of the greatest player to be named later. Ever. We'll get to that for next podcast. Oh god. We'll get to that for next podcast. That's, that'd be that'd be I could go on brilliant. A, I have to be at work at two. I could go on for hours rambling about how much I hate the the in trades player to be named later or cash considerations. Give me a bag of fucking hockey pucks. Or a deflated basketball. When you're, or, playing, when you're playing baseball, give me some hockey puck. Yeah, give me a deflated basketball or in a pump and some needles. Or a deflated football in a pump and some needles. Some hockey pucks. Some baseballs that don't even have laces or the skin on them. Some yet-to-be-assembled baseballs. <laughs> yeah. Give me something I can freaking use. Give me something that I can see and know what it is at face value. Exactly. Don't give me like don't give me don't give me words. Don't oh. don't give me words on paper. Like all I got, we'll t- we will talk about that in the next podcast because I'm sure by the time we get the next podcast, oh trade deadline will be heating up. Yeah, because let's see, trade deadline is what the thirty first this year. It's either the thirty first or the first. I want to say it's usually on Monday. So I feel like yeah, it's the thirty first. I feel like it's the thirty first. So next week, depending on when we actually do this, yeah, we'll have a lot of trade talk. And as we co- slowly get closer to the trade deadline, we'll have more trade talk. Oops, did not want to tab out of that. Um, so we'll get to stuff like the trade terms of yeah, cash considerations and player to be named later. <laughs> But no, just when it comes to team building, it's pur- purgatory, reload, and trust the process. I hate trust the process because it's a, where's the line of, we suck, and oh, we're rebuilding. And how we'll long there. do you let it go yeah. for it? So I like, I pose the question, and you guys in YouTube, like, if you're watching, listening to this on YouTube, I'd love to see you guys in the comments there. How long should you be, are you okay with trusting the process? Like, how long are you, how long do you think is okay for a team to say, yeah, trust the process? Well, I mean, how long have the 76ers been bad? They've been bad a long time. Yeah. How many years would they say they've probably been in this process? It's hard to say. But I feel like... I think for the maximum, if, I mean, if that is what the front office of your team decides to do is just... Suck. <laughs> yeah. to, to, until to get... they, suck until they get good. And and they picked the worst league to do it in. One of the worst leagues to do it in. Like if if NFL teams tanked like this, you're guaranteed. Yeah. It's like if you yeah. go out there and win one game in a season. If you don't win any games this season, pull it a pull an 08 Detroit Lions there. But um, if you don't do if you don't win a game, you're assured the number one pick. They're yeah. in the NBA. They have the lottery. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. Or look at the Oilers. The Oilers had a trust the process for oh, a while. The Oilers. The they Oilers trust the trust the process. Gary Bettman was in their back pocket. Uh, Bettman was their process. Ah, oh, Jesus. I mean, granted, all of those years, the Oilers were bad. How did they get a number one pick all them damn years in a row? Seventeen Jesus. in a row. Sucked. No, I went on. A, there is a. I might still have a str- the stream or the YouTube video somewhere. I was playing NHL sixteen or seventeen, and someone. I was streaming at the time. This was when 17 came out. Oh, boy. Last um, fall. 17. It was back in September when 17 came out, and I was streaming in NHL 17 at the time. And someone said something to me about it. About and I, was just, I went on this rant, because as a Coyotes fan, and by extension at times, a Blue Jackets fan, right. other than the one year the Coyotes went to the freaking Western Conference Finals and then lost to the Kings... The Coyotes have been mediocre or bad at best. Mediocre for at their best. Entire history. Yeah, for a very long time, other than a handful of years. Mediocre at best. And 17 years in a row, the Oilers get the first pick. Right. Explain that to me. Seven, you're telling me they were so bad 
that they had an over 50% chance of winning the lottery. Right. And then what do you Except know? Except for 17 years. And then what and do you know this year? Eventually they finally pay off. This year, I mean, Ed- Edmonton's long out of it. They're not yeah. even in discussion for the number one pick. Guess what? It doesn't go to the worst team. Yeah. Edmonton was the worst team all them years. Yeah. I mean, they were, even when they weren't, they were getting it. They yeah. were getting that top pick. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Like, I just, that irks me. I mean, granted, those years that they were winning it, yeah, they were the one, like, they were one of the worst teams in the league. Not Maybe not necessarily the worst, but they were up there. And what did they get out of it? Connor McDavid's the only thing good. They got Taylor Hall. And granted, there's, like, I don't want to say competing, but, you know. Now? Yeah. Are. Yeah, they have a chance. They can make the playoffs. Connor McJesus, they can do anything. Yeah. So, yeah, like give give me years. How long do you think? We'll go back to it real quick. Obviously, to how long would I trust the process before you just like before I lose my yeah before you like patience? Yeah, you lose your patience and you just start looking for a different team to root for. For instance, uh, like something like that. I would say at the most, the longest I'd be comfortable with purposely losing is like four or five years okay i can see that yeah i because if you do it any longer than that that is you you go through and especially a, a, an nba team Yo, oh that God. is that is five drafts yeah if you can't assemble a team of good players in five drafts that for one either means the talent isn't there which is none of your own fault or you draft terribly yeah. You just and, believe the hype with every player that, that comes around. And think about this. There is talent in in the NBA drafts. Yes. Like, in maybe the first eight picks. <laughs> yeah, first eight picks, definitely. A little bit deeper this year, I think. Yeah. So, and I'm not just talking NBA, just so we know this. Like, I'm talking any sport. Anybody. In but in fact, terms of NBA, if you cannot get a five winning years. team in five, in five drafts, Okay. Like the 76ers, they just they were bad for how many years? Long time. Oh, you can't. You get all them, all them top draft picks. You're gonna have a good team eventually. Yeah, eventually. And right now, I mean, you go into this next season. Everyone's still relatively young, but you could. You, they could. They could make the playoffs yeah. as a as a late seed, especially in the East. In the West, no. Anybody can make the playoffs in the East. Okay, if you're so, in the East, you just gotta feel great because it's like you can make it. You won't. You won't go anywhere. You'll just, especially if you're like the 76ers, if they make it this year, they're an eight seed. Yeah. Ninety nine percent chance likely they're gonna play the Cavs and get swept. I feel like <laughs> the race for the the seventh and eight seeds is more exciting than the race for the number one. Yeah. Because we all know who the number one seed's going to be most years. Somehow Cleveland didn't get it this year. They lost one game to Boston yeah. one, or like early. Uh, somehow like that, that didn't happen. Like the race for seven and eight that's kind of exciting. More than, more than one and two. Yeah. You know, one and two most times are going to meet up. Seven and eight. You know, seven means you got a shot. Eight means you get Cleveland. <laughs> eight means you're going to lose by 50. Yep. I remember what, not last year, oh, back in 16. When I think it was the Pistons who were the eight seed, they did make the eight seed, and they and did get swept. But I think that was the closest sweep ever. Yeah, other than the one game where they lost by like what? Wow. We got blown out by one game, any but those three, <laughs> the other three games, we we had a chance to win, and we just did. Yeah, that was then, just Cleveland being better. Yeah, that that one game where it was like, oh yeah. I mean, Reggie Jackson's our point guard. What do you want from me? <laughs> point seeded. Okay, so we covered basketball. How long you should wait? What about baseball? Ugh. Baseball's tricky because okay. in the NBA, top draft picks are, are there immediately. Yeah. Baseball, um, they're not. Baseball, they're not. You're talking at least most of the time one or two years, yeah. if not longer, for, for draft picks. Yeah. Um, top draft picks, obviously, would be there quicker. Um, it's It's... It almost shortens it because free agency is a little bit of a bigger deal. Yeah, free agency and trading. Yeah, free agency and trading are, are bigger <laughs> deals than building through the draft in 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 the, in the MLB. Apparently yeah. not though, because Chicago's do, did what they did last year. Yeah. Um, baseball, I feel like, and they're making moves to get better, as we saw from 
Yeah. Breaking news on the podcast. Oh, freaking Quintana, man. Yeah. yeah, you knew he was going to get traded, but that that's, just, a, that's that, a weird one. That right there just makes the Central easier. Yes, it does. And it's not like the White Sox were any... It, if if the Twins were trading the white people at the deadline, Jesus. Like, the only thing... That would have like, been something. That would have just made that one game against the White Sox for whoever... Yeah. Just easier. That one game. Okay, well, but continue on with yours. Your trust the process. Yeah, um, for, for baseball, I feel like it's shorter. Okay. Just because if you can't assemble a team in four years just via anything, if you can't trade things or move things around... Weeks and things can't do that. Uh, you're bad. You're bad. I like, mean, front office wise, you're bad. The players are bad. You need to move on from those guys. If you're if you're talking, they can't get it done in a four year span. I mean, it's bad. Move on. Like, look at the Padres, friend. Serious. Like, the Padres are an easy broken. One. <laughs> <laughs> they're broken. Like they were never they were never uh, intact, but they're broken. Like the Padres are an easy one to look at in baseball. Um. I don't want to say last year's Twins because obviously the Twins this year are playing really well. All of a sudden, the Twins are they were just winning games. Yeah, and who knows what's going on there? Um, <coughs> the Brewers last year, like I mean, the Brewers made a few moves this past off season. Eric Thames, the god. But like, so what? You got five years for NBA. I'm five years for NBA. I'll give yeah. you five years. All I'll give five years also because you need five players to freaking field a team. Yep. Or they're having a team on the court at least. Um, how many years for baseball? You got you thinking? Um, three to four three to, to four. get the team, okay. and then obviously you extend it because those guys aren't going to be in MLB right away. So you're yeah. probably talking a longer time frame just because of how different the, the dynamic yeah. is of how <clears throat> things work with with draftees and and getting called up. But yeah, so I'm gonna go a bit different there. I'm gonna say. Three, at most, just because of how free agency and trading. Work. Yeah, that's, free agency <clears throat> and trading is so much like, bigger than the other ones. That's all I'm gonna say with the, what I'm gonna say with baseball. Free agency and trading. Yep. Like, it's yeah. That's all I can say about it. The trade deadline is a major thing in baseball. That two weeks. It's almost free agency. Yeah, post All Star break. <clears throat> From the time the All Star break starts to that freaking that that two week span is a pretty big deal. Um, let's see, NHL hockey. What are you thinking? The process. Uh, Obviously, the Oilers tr- Oilers fans trusted the yeah, process. Apparently, seventeen years. <laughs> seventeen years. Um, and it's just now paying off for them. Yeah, it's uh, sidebar there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. You just don't see it. That's that's yeah. what makes it hard to gauge. You just don't see teams in in, uh, in, in NHL in NHL complete tank. tank. Well, <clears throat> unless it's the Oilers, but yeah. Like I personally feel like, and this is someone who isn't a Red Wings fan. I feel like you're gonna be getting into that point of. I'll tell you. I'll tell you after this upcoming season. Okay. If, they, if they're getting into that. Okay. Well, we'll hold off on that. Until they they mid- sold one time. It'll. Uh, t- realistically they should okay uh, you know this team was so good for so long they're kind of in between right now i don't think they're as bad as they were last year you think I, are you do you think in the purgatory area first i don't think they're quite in purgatory okay yet. i i think they're good enough if okay. they make you know they they make it make a trade they still have to trade away a goalie I mean, they still have to do something. We have two goalies that are making starter money. It, it's, it's, just, yeah. it's just not Okay, feasible. so real quick, what you're saying is, because the way I look at the process, there's four steps. Yeah. There's rebuilding, purgatory. <laughs> you're making the playoffs for five. You are you have a chance of making the playoffs as a low seed, mm-hmm. so there's five. That's three, is low seed play, like seven, eight seed in playoffs. Four is... You're contending to be a threat in the playoffs, and then five is contending Pittsburgh. to Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah, five is like Pittsburgh, where or even no, I don't really want to say Washington. We saw we see how that works. Like Washington, greatest regular season team of all time. Yeah, like Pittsburgh, basically, where or the Blackhawks, uh, the Blackhawks from a couple of years ago. Yeah, I should say not this year's Blackhawks who got swept by the freaking 
predators. But like the freaking, I before this year I would have said the predators are that at step three of low tier right playoffs, and then you have the if they make the playoffs like they're your number one, like at, you, they're the number one. That's the fifth. That's where every team wants to be at, and not every team can be at. So you're saying the Red Wings are at that third tier of they can make the playoffs, but it would be a low tier. Yeah, I think it's it, that may just be the fan in me talking as well. Okay, but I'll see I that. Think like just looking at them, I don't think they're that bad. Okay, no, I I can see that. <laughs> I I did not watch a whole lot of Red Wings games last year. I I don't. Towards the end, neither did I. <laughs> I was about to say once once baseball started warming up. Not, yeah. not so much. Uh, I'm gonna go to the Tigers and watch them. So yeah, I mean it's well, and that was you know that's opening day. You know everyone's got hope and everything. Yeah. You know anyone can win. Sixty-two games, all the things you tell yourself. That uh, yeah, yeah, uh, no. It's like oh, my team can make it. You know, there's Padres fans that say that this is their year, but <laughs> Padres. Padres fans that don't know what they're watching. Okay, so back to the topic. How long do you think? Like, would you give a trust the process? In hockey. For NHL, oh, God. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. The The thing is, with, with the trades, trades in the NHL, there are some, but not no. as many. No. Not as many blockbuster trades in, in the there NHL. There isn't even a whole lot of free agent moves. <clears throat> no. A lot of people stay put, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Let's think it's... about if the Red Wings could have got Stamkos. <laughs> And then Steve Eiserman yeah. pulled something out of his hat and some was somehow was able to sign him with Tampa still. I, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. NBA, NA, or NHL is very hard. I, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it at a time frame of, of also like MLB. I'm going to put it. Five, three, four, five. Yeah. I'm... Yeah. I'll have to give it like at most five years. Yeah. Before you just start to suck. Like, the Coyotes aren't at the whole, st- or aren't at step one of the process. Thank God. They're well, more. They, got some, they have some players. The Coyotes are more of purgatory. If they can find a couple of players or could stay a little bit healthier, yeah. they could be a low tier 7 8 seed playoff spot. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially. Because they did show some promise last year. Uh-huh. Um, At least one of our teams did. Yeah. So, yeah, but I would give five years because you don't see it that often. Five years is like an easy number. Just like, yeah, you you can build a solid <laughs> first line. Yeah. First couple. You can build a solid two lines. A core. It's a, you yeah. Can, you can build your superstars. You can yeah, build you your can build, core. You can build your core. You can get a good goalie. You can get things to build around. Yeah. And and the draft, the NHL draft is a weird freaking otherworldly concept. Um, okay, this is gonna be probably I think this will be the hardest one. Um, other than soccer. soccer yeah, we ain't even gonna We go can't to even get to soccer because soccer is so freaking weird. There are teams that Yeah. Oh. Soccer is just too weird. Um NFL. How long do you oh, give a team, boy. like, say, let's say you were a Browns fan came up to you oh, and no. said, how long should I trust the process before this, this team is good? Well, if you're a Browns <laughs> fan, I'd tell you. Um, Sorry. I, I'd try first try to recruit you to my Lions. Um, <laughs> my Lions have a little bit more of a, a future a, a than shot. the Browns do. Um, I, I, after that... It's a little bit weird in in the in the NFL because I feel like in the in the NFL more than any other sport, coach firings and GM firings happen. Oh god, a yeah. lot, a lot every year. I mean, Black Monday is a thing. It's it's really you know everyone gets fired day after the regular season ends. Just all comes down. Yeah, and yep, True. with that with that turnover, the windows are smaller. So, okay. like, teams are hiring new GMs, especially the, the the ones that are bad, every two to three years sometimes. Yeah. Which is, 
that's why they stay bad is because they're not in a way trusting the process those are the ones that don't do it yeah um if you're getting a gm into a team you need to have them there for th- i'd say years. two three years before you even yeah. start to think about what because the first two to three years are literally just about just building yeah. Building up the team, building it the way you want it, the way you see it, and then after that, it's just it, it's 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 just something you don't. I don't think you see in the NFL. No, you see tanking in the NFL. You see tanking, but it's just it doesn't. But you don't see like some of the other things, especially you see in the NBA. I think like the NFL has no parity. The teams that stay bad. Like, there's no way for them to get better. Like, I mean, there just isn't. (laughs) Because you only have set... You have... Unless you make some trades to get get draft picks, you only have seven draft picks. Which, there's another thing. Trades in the NFL just are non-existent. Yeah. And the thing is, really, the only chance that... I mean, there's... You could, could, by some miracle, find a Tom Brady in the sixth or seventh round. It's you, there could be some miracle that that could happen. Like you could have a quarterback, like or, or not just necessarily a quarterback, a player so, like Tom Brady who yeah. wasn't you know phenomenal at college. It, Michigan fan, and again, this is as an Ohio State fan. Michigan fans who say Tom Brady was like phenomenal at college. Oh, he wasn't. He he was average. Go, go look at his games. He, he was, was average. He had a good Orange Bowl. Yeah, Tom Brady was average. Tom Brady was average. Tom Brady had gar- was garbage at the combine. Oh, that was- picture. That Tom Brady ran a freaking six second forty as freaking, a fucking quarterback. Freaking noodle arms at the <laughs> at the combine. Tom Brady did awful at the combine. Tom Brady was average at best at Michigan. We will we will sum it up simply. Tom Brady was fuck all at the combine. <laughs> yeah, Tom Brady is a minor miracle at best. Mm. Tom Brady is an anomaly. And Michigan fan loves him for it. <laughs> yeah. And I can understand, like, realistically, Tom Brady is your most, one of your most successful freaking NFL players. Yeah. I will, I, I will give you that. Yes. He is. But again, he's also a freaking anomaly. He is a miracle. I feel like he's, at this point, he's, he's the most successful uh, yeah. Michigan No, nah, Chad Henney's the most successful. <laughs> Chad Henney. My right. heart. My heart, two years. Denard Robinson. Um, back up, yeah, back. So I think Chad Henney's in the league. I don't think so anymore. Oh, they, they, I think he did, went to Canadian football. Did Jackson go get rid of him? I think so. He's probably on a team with Tate Forcier. Yeah. <laughs> Tate Forcier. I remember when freaking there were Michigan fans who thought he was going to be like the next Tom Brady. Oh, I fell in love with Tate Forcier, dude, when he was playing for Michigan. And, and we were, and we tore shit up in the non conference schedule. We mm-hmm. killed teams. And then we got to Big Ten. I remember when um Tate Forcier was still a quarterback. This was before they switched to Denard, and they played Ohio State. Oh yeah. And Tate Forcier threw like six interceptions on his first ten passes. Yep, and I'm pretty sure that's the last game he uh, <laughs> he played. I don't think it's the last game he played in. It was the last game he started. Oh, that's cause, yeah, that's definitely because it was uh, they they started Denard game one next year. Tate yeah. Forcier only had one year. Yeah. Um, who knew I'd, I'd be talking about Tate Forcier, right? That was just fun. You brought it up yourself. I know. I just think it was funny. Freaking gets to Ohio State game in Columbus, it's like five interceptions on the first ten passes or something. Is that like, as bad as a ratio as we thought Wilton Spate was gonna have, right? Wilton Spate, one pass, one pick. Yeah, I was there. Oh my god. Freaking quarterback controversy between that and um, who's the other guy? John O'Corn and <laughs> they, uh, you know, they announce him. They put his picture up on the big, uh, big screen at Michigan Said, Stadium, and then I'm glad comes out and throws a pick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like well, we're bringing well, O'Corn in. <laughs> I, I'm glad I'm an Ohio State fan, especially a couple of years ago when we had three quarterbacks. Oh, that was such bullshit, man. I would have killed for just one of them. That was back when Devin Gardner was our quarterback. Quarterback wearing number 98. Yeah, how'd that work out for you? 
terribly. Yeah. So that's all I picture with Devin Gardner was him laying on the ground after Brady Hoke called that stupid damn "Oh, let's go for two and try to beat him right now" play <laughs> against you guys and oh god, yeah, yeah. trying so to ruin crazy. trying to ruin your season. We're like oh oh well we're close. We better throw everything. That was comical at best. Um, but yeah, back to what I was saying, like. The NFL has a lot of parody. There, there is no parody in the NFL, I should say. Weird phone call. Yeah, a very weird phone call and a weird text message. See, most of the time, people people will call me, and um, you know, they they may leave a voicemail. They don't text me. I get a text from a number I don't know that says, "On my way to the builder's supply to pick up quotes, and to see where when storm doors will be there. You there." I, I'm not going to a builder's supply store today. <laughs> nope. Nope. No plans to go to a builder's supply store today? No. <clears throat> That's interesting. That's, um, I'm going to love this voicemail. That's going to be really, really great. Interesting. But as I was saying before we got on tape 4CA. <laughs> tape 4CA and weird phone calls, yes. Um, The NFL doesn't have a lot of parody. No. Like, the only way you're going to get picks who are like in the draft just like bad teams are staying bad the only way you're gonna be able to build through the draft is those first three rounds because like i mean there's a chance in four five or six or even seven you could get someone who's really good yes. there's a chance you can find like you could possibly find someone like tom, like tom brady's a good example mm. that mm-hmm. of, was and i'm not gonna go back on the rant that i was on <laughs> was average at freaking college in college yes like I said, I think Michigan fans are delusional who say. Oh, hey, I mean, he wasn't. He wasn't bad. He was good, not great. He, again, he was average. That's the best way. He was a, a slightly above average. Right. Um. And then a freaking piss poor combine. <laughs> I feel like I could have had a better combine than Tom Brady. Yeah. Just saying. We could have probably ran better 40 times. Tom Brady still runs like seven seconds. Oh, yeah. I run one. Just a hair over five. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, like, there's that chance. But other than those first three rounds, you're not getting someone who's going to be, like, no. good. So, the whole, I, I will yeah. give, yeah, I will give NFL fans a chance, uh, trust the process that is significantly longer. Yeah. At best, <clears throat> assuming you actually tr- go through the steps of trust the process, <laughs> which most NFL teams don't do. No. Most NFL teams are a, we want to win now. We don't, we don't want to rebuild. We want to win this year. And it's, and it's also it's, weird it's in the stupid. NFL because you don't <laughs> rebuild. I yeah. mean, uh, you can't trade everyone away and start over. You're pretty much stuck with yeah, those the same, same people players. for a while. The same shitty players. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. It's like, okay, what do you do? You just suck. So, like I said, I give NFL fans, like, I'll give them 10 years. That sounds about right. I like, don't, think I, don't if, think I can say anything different. If you actually do the whole trust the process of keeping the same GM, if you don't do, if you don't go through the same fucking bullshit of the NFL teams well, go through, we lost through, two years in a row. We better fire the GM. Yeah, if you don't, if you keep the GM, you have an owner who has faith in the GM. But you have to publicly come out and say that this is. Otherwise, if you lose yeah. for ten ten years, if you lose for ten straight years and don't say. Like this is what we're doing. Yeah. It, it, they're the the clamming and also the clam clamoration, I don't know what the word is. Clamoring. Clamoring for the GM and the coach and all that to be fired. Yeah. Would be well, nuts. <clears throat> yeah, it's like come on. You need to find a way. Like you can't like the NFL, like a number. <laughs> yes, damn same damn number keeps calling me. Okay. Not answering. Okay. I don't know who it is. Like the only way, like free agency is not. Like, I mean, 
we don't have a lot of big free agent signings because the NFL has long time. But you ever, every once in a while, you'll have one like Adrian Peterson. This <laughs> voicemail. Oh no no no! Oh, just Adrian <laughs> Peterson. Oh, I'm your listen. Yeah. We're gonna listen to this voicemail. I think he said the name of Marty. <laughs> I think I think he's looking for a Marty. A Marty? That's interesting. That's funny. Did he say Marty? Hey Marty, this is John. I'm on my way to the builders. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. So yeah, I think like it's kinda hard to trust the process of here. Because you have to go through a long process. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, that's just the thing. It, it doesn't happen. You have to go through the long step one. <clears throat> like, step one is a very long time in the NFL. I'm trying not to laugh at, at this. Step one's a very long time, and then you have to go through the second step of the purgatory. Yeah. And then step three of, you're going to suck in the playoffs. This man really thinks your name is Marty. He really thinks my name is Marty. Just send him a text and be like, this isn't Marty. This is someone else. He'd be like, bro, I think you got the wrong number, bro. <laughs> yeah, you got the wrong number, bro. No. Um, so yeah, I don't think you can, there is no pro. like, you can't trust the process in the NFL, I'm sorry. I mean, well, you can, but it doesn't happen. There. Um, so we got that real quick. We do. I do want to do some Premier League predictions. Okay. Just because the Premier League, um, Manchester United, starting. Oh, damn it. Yeah, Manchester. Soon. Yeah. They play LA this. They play the Galaxy this weekend. Oh well, that ought to be fun for Manchester United. It's it sucks because I'm a fan of both teams. Right. Um. Actually, here let's go through. MLS is halfway through their season. About. Yes. Through their regular season, I should say. Their playoffs are fucking beyond long. Um, let's actually pull the tables up real quick because I haven't been keeping track because the Galaxy have been god awful this year. Might as well. I'm still <laughs> waiting on uh, still waiting on a Detroit MLS team. Right. There it is. MLS. Dan Gilbert, I'm talking to you. Dan Gilbert. So who do you who do you have winning the um <clears throat> MLS this year? I'll, I'll give you who a look at the t- who do we got. I'll let give you that's see. the top one's the East. You have oh. Chicago, Toronto, NYCFC. Atlanta, Orlando, Columbus. Oh, Atlanta would be an interesting story in their first year. Atlanta, that's the top six in the East. Goddamn, NYCFC. Right. And then in the West, <clears throat> in the West you have Kansas City, Dallas, Houston, Portland, San Jose, Vancouver. To- are your top six? Ten points are the Galaxy back. Oh, Jesus. Oh, boy. Wait, wait, wait. No, the Galaxy actually are top eight. Surprisingly, and they're only two back of top six. So, oh, see, I was also tied with six at seven. So, I don't think the Galaxy even. They don't. They'll make the playoffs, but they'll lose. Neither do my um, adopted New York Red Bulls. Um, oh, God. I think they're in seventh, I saw. Yeah. I two points behind Columbus shot, but... in, in six. They, they make the playoffs. I, I really think just off of the season, like I said, I haven't been paying, paying a whole lot of attention. Um... Out of the West, I think Kansas City will probably make it. Yeah. Maybe Seattle if Seattle plays really good. But Kansas City will make it to the final. And it'd be interesting to see Orlando or Atlanta make it. That's what I said. Atlanta as someone would be from, an interesting one. As someone from Florida, I would love Orlando too. <laughs> but Kansas City, Atlanta would be interesting. But let's get back to the Premier League. Yes. As, I guess I haven't been paying enough attention to the MLS to give the, any... The not Barclays PL. Yeah. Who do you have for your top four this year? Um, two years now into Jose Mourinho at uh, Manchester United. United, and he finished what? They finished. Fifth. I believe they finished fifth. Let's see. Um. Oh, hey, they already have the last year's table down. Never mind. Oh, <laughs> damn it. Well, but we it know. It was fifth. It was yeah, fifth. We know we know my, my blues <laughs> won the Fucking Premier kill, League. Kill me. <laughs> um Kill me. <laughs> Continue on though. They uh 
they had it pretty easy. I mean, it's easy when you don't when you are a good team, and you know, and you may see more teams do this. Be bad, miss Champions League, miss all that, so yeah. you don't have to play any of those games. Literally, just go for the Premier League. Yeah. But why would you want to do that? Obviously, you wanna you wanna compete in the Champions League and all that. Okay. And and and, and meet and compete in domestic cups and things like that. Um, I think I think Chelsea will be in the what are we doing top four? Top, yeah, top four. Top, I think they'll be in the top four, but I don't see them winning the title. I see them either third or fourth, really. Okay. Um, because uh, they're they're eventually gonna lose Diego Costa. And nobody's gonna be there as a striker yeah. anymore because now, uh, the backup that we had was gone. Unless we just trust Mishi Bachwai to be to be our scorer to be our striker. Which I don't know if I'm ready to do. Um, <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh at that. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. So because so, Diego Costa is going back to Atletico. Yep. So I mean, you have someone at. So you have Chelsea three or so four. So Chelsea three or four. I'm going to put them four to be safe. Four. I have, okay. Um. Third, I got to go out of left field on this. Oh boy. Um, but I don't know who to go out of left field. Let me take a look. Let me take a look at just the teams. Because okay. if somebody's going to be a surprise. I'm going to give you my top four real quick. Um, You know what? No, it's not. It's not a surprise. Three, okay, so I will go four to one. Okay. I will go Chelsea four. Okay. I will go Swansea. Not Swansea. Um, Southend? Tottenham. Or Tottenham. I will go Tottenham. Swansea. Jesus, Swansea. Swansea, what the fuck? I have, them, I have them getting relegated this year. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be relegated. Um, Tottenham, I have Tottenham third. And then he's going to hate me for this. I have Manchester City. City I'll second, say City United too. first. I'll say City. I, so my four, because <clears throat> I'm not going five. I Actually, I'll go five because my four is a hard one. I have Tottenham at five. Okay. Uh, Chelsea at four, Everton at three. Yeah, I think Everton could oh God. actually finally maybe now that they have Wayne Rooney. Golden boot incoming for Wayne Rooney. Right. <laughs> um, Arsenal. Yep. I, actually, no, I'd go with actually, Liverpool. Arsenal somewhere in there. Like BPL is something I've been looking at too. Tot or Liverpool at two, and then I think this year with Romelu Lukaku and oh boy. like everyone else that United has, Pogba. I th- Pogba. I'm a, is uh, I'm a little upset that Zlatan's not gonna be there. I was anymore. gonna say he's not there anymore. No, he's not on any team because he's still recovering for injury. He could yeah. possibly get re-signed by. United. I don't see it happening. I doubt it. Especially if Lukaku's playing really good. Yeah. We still have De Gea. I think this could be the first year in five years now that they have that they could win. The um, yeah, it's, the it's, Premier it's a little bit of a shock to me as a as a Chelsea fan seeing Jose Mourinho go somewhere and not like have them win the title in their first year because yeah. that's just what teams do that are that are coached by him. Yeah, that's just what I mean, that's what happened with Chelsea. It's what happened. <sighs> Everywhere he's they been. Could have, had they not had that stretch of January, Duh. February, where the only thing they did was draw. Right. I mean, they didn't lose any games, but they didn't yeah. win any. doesn't help when you don't win. Did they play the games? Really? <laughs> they may as well not have. Hey, that's what I'm saying. And then my relegation, I think Swansea might get relegated. Oh, boy. Um, Watford definitely is. Sorry, Watford fans. If you're if if there are any Watford fans listening to this, sorry. I feel like there aren't. <coughs> I feel like. Does Watford have fans? I don't think that. Well, for one, that's 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 a big reason why they're not. So, <laughs> yeah. Watford doesn't have any fans. Watford doesn't have fans. How are you literally? Like how I always wondered how people did that. How are you a fan of a team that just? I mean, they're good in one league, but they're terrible. Yeah. They're good but bad. Um. Uh, like Swansea, how are, I can how see Swansea. How were Leicester fans before two years ago? Right. Um. Oh, Huddersfield. Y'all are getting relegated. Oh, did they get? Did they get promoted? Uh, they get promoted. Yeah, y'all are getting relegated. 
Nice having you in the Premier League. Thanks for the free win. Y'all are getting relegated. Thanks for the 5-0 wins. Watch them win the freaking the title this right. year. I would be I would be done. I'd be like, you know what? I Two can't. times in three years I'd that like, you know, I can't. freaking shit at a left field has happened. Actually, you know what? No. I'm going to keep Swansea in now because I just saw Brighton is on the, is in the table. Oh, God. So the three that freaking got, or no, Watford stayed up from last year. Watford, you guys are going to get relegated. Sorry. Um, Huddersfield, y'all are gone. Brighton, y'all are gone. I'm going to change my prediction. I'm going to say uh, Chelsea's going to win the Premier League because of their uh, new Nike uniforms. They're going to be... Uh, <laughs> oh, God, those ugly-ass things. Yeah, they're they're really not all that special. Uh. They're literally blue and, 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 and white. At least, do they still say Yokohama? Yes, they do. Oh, fucking Christ. I will say uh, the worst uniform I saw them release, they just signed a goalkeeper the other day. Yep. Um, the worst iteration of that uniform that they put is the goalkeeper. They're nice. They're, they're orange, and they're like a deeper, darker orange. Not like a burnt orange, but they're like a, not bright. They're dark. Okay. The Yokohama Y is red. You can hardly see it. It's so stupid. So that sounds literally awful. in the right lighting, it could look it could look like the Yokohama logo is literally just offset for no <laughs> apparent reason. Yeah, because you don't have the Y. Yeah. You because it the, doesn't look like there's says, a Y there. It just says Okohama. Yeah. Or no, I think it's I think there there's the Y logo and then it does say Yokohama on it, I believe. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. Yokohama, Yokohama Tires, spelled T-Y-R-E-S, as they spell it across the pond, apparently. Or T-Y-R-E-S. I got nothing. Oh, man. Nothing. Oh, well. Um, well, holy shit, we're at two hours. Oh, yeah, man. Um, let's see, anything else? Anything else? Uh, All-Star Game, did you watch it this past weekend? I this did. Week? I did. I, I am... More so in MLB um, than any other league and all-star game. I love MLB's all-star game. I love the home run derby. I don't even care. I get down for the shitty all-star game uniforms every year. I buy the hats and whatnot, and I'll watch the whole damn thing. At least the all-star uniforms were better this year than they were last year. Brown. Padres Brown. Those were interesting. I didn't. <clears throat> Padres quite like, Brown and yellow. You know, and that's funny that you bring that up because I was literally wearing my uh, my Tigers. Those the the home run derby, the batting practice caps yeah. from um, mm-hmm. from last year's All Star game this morning. <laughs> um, yeah, th- those were interesting. This year's those those other uniforms, the the batting practice uniforms and the home run derby uniforms for this year's. Yeah, th- those were sweet. The hats were stupid because they were literally like mesh. Yeah, the hats were awful. Like I, I don't know mm-hmm. if you uh, looked at the one I was wearing. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. That I was wearing the other day. Yeah. That was. Maybe that's that, what caused you to hit more. Dick. Maybe I was wearing a home run derby hat. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I don't. I, I I was not a fan. I am a I'm a big hat guy. That was one of the more like harder oh, hats I've ever. No, no, just it's just hard. Oh. Like it does, you know, hats. You know, the regular old like new era hats, they they bend, they're flexible. Yeah, what yeah. this felt like it was in shape and just couldn't move. That's weird. It's very weird. That's strange. It's very um, strange. Yeah. How do you feel now that the All Star Game isn't for home field advantage? Um, I like it. Personally. I like it. I think it's. I personally, think it's I about like time. It. Um, it, it it's at the end of the day, it's an exhibition. Yeah. It should be treated like one. Yeah, I agree. And, and for, the, for the longest time, it wasn't. And, I mean, I, I, how do you let a game that is just, it's literally just for people's enjoyment so they can see all the greatest players on one field at one time, how do you let that decide something yeah. that, that, that really does change things? Yeah. I mean, home field advantage in baseball is a thing. Well, that's my, like, the thing is... I find, like, the only sport that home field matters, really, really, is baseball. Yeah. 
Football as well. Well, and baseball. It can. It, it could it be. For some teams. Yeah, for some it's teams. A, it's either a huge factor or not a factor at all. Yeah. Like Seattle, big deal. Well, Foxboro, yeah. big deal. Yeah. For some teams, okay, it is a big deal. Ford Field, not intimidating. <laughs> nope. Not as intim- intimidating as the Silverdome was. No. The refs literally had to tell the fans to quiet down. But, like, baseball and home, home field and baseball is a big difference because big not all the parks are the same. Exactly. A basketball court is the same. Regulation, hockey rinks. Same. They're all you the same. You can do certain things, but, like, you know, the, the boards at Joe Louis Arena were always a little bit more bouncy than, than some yeah, of the other like, boards. Yeah, like, other than that, like, okay, that's one thing. But it's regulation size, that's it. It's not, like... Base, and that's why I love always love baseball parks that you, they can be fuck it you could have big old green monsters out there yeah. like Fenway St- you that could have park freaking is just ivy on your fucking outfield wall <laughs> um you can have the balls can disappear into <laughs> yeah not so much in the fall yeah right when it starts to die off it just kind of b- bounces and sticks there <laughs> um you can have the freaking shorter walls like they do at freaking Padres Field, whatever yeah. it's called. Padres Stadium. Uh, Petco, Petco Park. Petco Park, thank you. Or Angel Stadium has some shorter walls on the sides. You can have those shorter walls. You can have no foul territory like Fenway, or you can have all the foul territory in the world like the Coliseum. Yeah. Or you could, you know, have the old freaking... Um, fuck, what's it called? The freaking... Polo ground, old polo grounds. Oh like hell yeah! The Dodgers used to play in or... the polo grounds. Yeah, was... with a four hundred and eighty foot center field. Yeah, four hundred and eighty foot center field. And... I'm pretty sure the longest in baseball right now is four twenty, and that's at Comerica Park. Yeah, I don't think anybody goes over four twenty. Le- left field of you could hit a home run to left field, and it can only go like one hundred and twenty feet. Yep. Or right field, maybe like one hundred and forty feet. Polo grounds. Yeah. Anymore. A rocket down to freaking center field. For God. Inside the Park City. Yeah. Inside the Park Grand Slam. Jesus, Jesus. Moses. Okay. Freaking, that would be a blast. Bunt Grand Never bunt. Hit. That's right. Even if you had to hit one freaking 480. Uh. <laughs> so yeah. Um. Real quick, we'll wrap this up because we're... Over two hours now. We are over two hours, um, yes. What games are you looking forward to this fall? All of them. All of them? Because all the games I play come out in the fall, minus MLB The Show. I uh, say, so that's like the only one. I just did um, pre-order all those all uh, the upcoming sports games. Physical yes. editions? I can't find them. You, oh, so you decided not to go through GameStop? Nope. Just didn't do Just went for the downloads, which means I'm going to have to get... Um, an external hard drive for my PS4. Yeah. Because, oh, God. I was going to say, like... There aren't... I mean, I looked... I don't even think GameStop has the physical copies I, I when I've looked into it. Fucking Christ. Because even on, on, on Madden, or on, like, the EA website... Yeah. I'm pretty sure it said uh, download only for for their, um, like, deluxe editions for all their games. Of course it EA Damn sports. it, EA. I say that too much. I'm on EA Sports EA Sports' case all the time. Because I don't I do not like buying digital versions of a sports game. I don't like buying digital versions of the game, period. How about I say you don't like it? No, I've never I've I have one digital game and it's not even on my console anymore. What game is it? Uh Drive Club. Oh. Oh god. It was <laughs> if it wasn't free, it was very <laughs> cheap. Because of PlayStation Plus. I got Drive Club when it was I wouldn't have paid. I, I, I played it two times. Is it? Yeah, it might be more than me. I played it once. <laughs> yeah, bad. I'll download it and stream it today. Why not? Oh, God. No, no I won't. Don't do it to yourself. No, I won't. Please don't do it to yourself. I, I feel bad for you. I, um, wouldn't, I wouldn't waste all that time downloading that game. I say. Oh, um, no. Have we found out when the L18 beta is? I still need to sign up for that. I believe it's um, late this month is when the, the beta codes get sent okay. out. 
I have to sign up for that. Yeah. Star Wars Battlefront Two beta, October second. I'm uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna play. That. I'm, excited. I'm, I'm excited for that. I'm excited. I'm not just excited. For, um, obviously, as someone who played FPS games professionally, I am excited for the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. But I am excited for the story as a Star Wars nerd. I'm more excited for that. Oh yeah, because definitely. Battlefront One didn't have this. Exactly. It had literally just missions and online gameplay, yeah. and it and the just online all gameplay sucked. wasn't bad. Yeah, the, on- uh, the online yeah. stuff was fun. We really should be a fun time. The original one or the or the the upcoming one? Uh, both. <laughs> both. Yeah. Both. Oh God, I haven't put that game in in a while. I mean, I haven't. I bought it. Didn't. Yeah. See yeah, what else? I mean. Yeah, I'm probably gonna play some sports games. I'm year. I'm super excited for Madden. I think this year's Madden's gonna be one of the best ones in a while. Uh, nah, nah. I'm excited for FIFA 18 with um mm. Journey Part Two. Now, see, I was really s- stoked for Journey Part One. Play it at all? Yep. Neither did I. Yep. No. Nope, Neither nope, did nope. I. I still got time, I guess. I could. I I did play FIFA yesterday. Did you? For the first time Extreme? in a while. Yeah. Wow. FIFA works a bit better. You just got kicked by my dog. Yeah. FIFA worked more. What did you play on stream when you played FIFA? Uh, I played Premier League games. That was it, oh, pretty much. I'm about I, to say. I, I played two episodes of career mode. Very early. Like, that's what I... I when I put FIFA in yesterday... Yeah. Uh, I, I was like, well, what do I want to do? Because yeah. that's literally all I all I streamed was was um, career mode with with Chelsea. Um, I put it I put it in. There was nothing there that I uh, was. It was all that you know exciting sounding. Yeah. So I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna do something I didn't do since like day one, and that was uh, FIFA career mode. Oh, like God. individual career mode. Oh, like player. Like player career mode. Oh my. Um but you didn't do journey? I did not do journey, no. So individual career mode. The save file was last saved September 29th. <laughs> which I'm pretty sure is the day the game comes out this year. Yep. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? That's awesome. So I, yeah, it's the first time I played it in um Wow. In, 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 in almost a year. <coughs> oh, one short of a year. I really wish they keep they would keep up with the I, I hate that they don't. I really... It's so freaking stupid. The release date just doesn't make sense. And then they don't put the new season schedule in there so it's hard to, the games. it's hard to do a franchise mode the only thing the only thing is as as somebody that watches the premier league it, which is good is that this, the premier league season starts like just a little like bit a, before fifa comes out a few out. weeks before yeah like so before. if you if you want to do like a franchise mode sort of thing or the career you miss mode four games. you miss yeah. four games and it, or or you just replay the four games they're not long games no like i keep mine at 6 minute halves yeah, me too. Six, Six or I think seven. the max I go is seven. Yeah. And Play it in a half hour. It's, it's yeah, easy. Exactly. Get like a twenty minute video out of it and boom. Plus, done. plus especially when you, when you're playing as much as as much as you would when a game comes out. Yeah. You you could play it all day. Yeah. And catch up in a day. Yeah, exactly. But then you have the MLS schedule, which. Like, that just irks me. God damn MLS. You, you, can, you can update the rosters in-game. They update the rosters. Yep. Yeah. But they don't update scheduling. Has anybody asked the question if that'll be in FIFA? I don't know. It, I, it's, I, so. I feel like it can't be that hard. Oh. Because <clears throat> they obviously put this year's schedule in. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? There. Let's see, what else is coming? I don't even know what else is coming. Like... All of the games that I'm I mean, excited there's... for, like, I'm excited for, like, Destiny 2. Yeah. Madden, FIFA, NHL. I don't know why I'm excited for NHL. I mean, it can't be any worse. <laughs> it can't, yeah, it can't be much worse than 17. 
I um, think I think that's why I'm excited for 18. It's just the hope that it's better than 18. Well, you're excited because there's gonna be one-handed deeks. Oh. I'm like, how do you do that as a first teaser trailer? Yeah. What was their What was their official trailer that they did at the NHL Awards? Uh, I didn't watch it. I, I I didn't care enough. I think I watched it, but it wasn't anything too memorable. I'm just saying, probably not. Yeah, I uh, I'm hoping. Like, I mean, Destiny Two. There's a reason I'm excited for sequel to Destiny. I fucking love Destiny. Yes. it's fun. I have fun playing the game. Battlefront Two. Huh? Well, it's a Star Wars game. Um, <clears throat> Madden. Easy to explain. FIFA, easy to explain. NHL 17 or 18. Please be God better. Please, dear God, be better than fucking 17. They just put a different name on it. It's literally the same disc in the game with, <laughs> yeah. a, roster, with a roster update. You can, you can see where freaking EA just took a marker and cut, put an 8 over the 7. <laughs> oh, my God. How, how, how much would you hate EA if that was actually the case? Um, I if, would... I would, I would, oh, uh, show up at their doorstep. <laughs> Just throw the disc at them. Like, all I'm going to say, how much would you be upset if they fixed none of the issues in 17? If they, if they trotted out the same damn computer, like, garbage, like AI. the exact, exact same game. Oh, I'd be, I'd be so frustrated. I played NHL 17 up until I actually just... I it's thought I was done. Reason. I thought I was done right after the uh, Stanley Cup Finals yeah. were over. Um, I played one more GM mode. Yeah, I must the, say, it's been recent. The, where the, when the San Jose Sharks... Uh, I just finished that one up yesterday. I won the Stanley Cup in the, in the final uh, episode, which was great. Yay. So that was cool. Yay. So I'm ending NHL 17 on a good note. But yeah. I can't... Pl- that, playing that game from September to now was hard i don't know how you could do it, it, it i genuinely don't 82 regular season hockey games um as a red wings fan as a red wings <laughs> fan um <coughs> tried to trade away my entire team at the freaking trade deadline like the red wings do because that's i keep the rosters yeah. as authentic as possible yeah. um oh let's see what else yeah you i did the B- games I, I did yeah i got swept out of the playoffs Oh, yeah, the first round. Yeah, first round, uh, New York Islanders got swept. Um, I had 50-plus episodes of NHL Be a Pro. Yep. Which I I would have had even more had I stayed with it the entire yeah. year. I didn't do that at all. How many episodes did you have of GM mode? Of uh, the Red Wings GM, I had a couple short of 25. I wasn't going to let it go any, any longer than 25. Okay. I uh, mainly because that's all I had thumbnails made for, because <laughs> they were all just the same the same thumbnail same with a different with a... with a new with a different number on it. Yeah. So, um, I was getting <laughs> up there, and I made it. So I was like, "Well, I'm giving myself three more years," and I just made as many thumbnails as I as I possibly could. And Makes I'm like, sense. "If I go over this, I'm just done. I'm just quitting. I'm done with it." Yeah. yeah uh, so there were 20 episodes of that, and then I did I did three season long live streams of the of the San Jose Sharks GM. And you did one episode of Relocation. Uh I did four episodes of that. Oh you did four? I did four episodes of that. Oh shit. And, I'm sorry for you. And it did uh I mean it did well. The first one did. Oh the first only the first one? The first one the second they all went down. <laughs> the first one got like a thousand views on like YouTube or something like that. Almost. I think yeah, it's it's it continues to get views because Vegas Golden Knights are relevant. Yeah, and the funny I mean, thing is, did you I, have Vegas Golden Knights as a tag? Yes, I probably did. That's exactly what it is. Then I, yeah, honestly That's though, I'm still getting views. Honestly though, I might not. <laughs> I I don't know if I do. I because I, I went and checked. Yeah, like I, I remember like two weeks ago it was like at twelve hundred. Yeah. I checked early, like th- this week it was like. Almost fourteen. I think, uh, yeah. yeah, that one. That one continues to get watched for some reason, which is unfortunate because it's literally just me designing the team and the <laughs> uniforms and the arena. That's funny. For an hour. Oh, ouch! Because that one keeps getting views. I it, it. That's probably why. I'd like to look at the the stats for that video. I'm about to say 
Because the average view is probably like literally fifty seconds. Yeah. <laughs> There's prob someone probably looks at it as like. Oh, this. this isn't what I thought. Because that's before I had a face cam. I had just microphone and gameplay, man. That was it. Yeah. I'll say like it's probably. But it's better than my game, my straight gameplay videos that I did. Yeah. I was saying it's probably you probably get like maybe at most of average fifty seconds. I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one. Yeah, well, th that'll be for next podcast. Average view on... Average view for the Vegas Golden Knights episode one. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that's a good time to wrap it up. Um, we're just shy of 12... What do we got? Or two and a half. Yeah. We're at 220. Hell so yeah. I'd say we did good for episode one. There was a lot to talk about because we were supposed to do episode one last week, but... Yeah. It didn't happen. And then our schedules just kicked our asses. I don't need, like, I don't want to get any into that on podcast. Right. I think I told you that story, right, about that kid? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, I, I'd assumed as much. Yeah. We'll leave you guys wondering on that one. Yeah, I won't tell, I can't tell you guys about that. That's a work thing. I just, I can't. Well, of course. Yeah, right. So, that's going to be it. Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. Next week, I think we'll set it up so we have, um... A webcam since we'll have our yes, das sir. horns yes das horn yes we will have das horns what we will be drinking out of them i don't know depends on the day depends on the day depends on the time yeah um do you, you probably don't have your work schedule yet today do you uh, i get that tomorrow I'm about to say you probably get that tomorrow i think i get mine today i'm hoping because this week was an anomaly and i had to work today or work <laughs> yeah this week was an anomaly and i had to work yesterday and today which are usually both my days off, Wednesday yeah. and Thursday. I usually have Tuesday, Thursday, or when Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, like I said, yesterday was an anomaly. I wasn't scheduled to work yesterday, but I had to. Um, I uh, had to go work for someone who could make it in. Yeah. Family reasons. It, it was a different person. Oh. Yeah. He actually... Did I say family reasons? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... As I said, thanks for watching, listening, listening. You listen. To Please it. don't watch. Do not watch, just listen. Just listen. If you watch, don't come back. Please come back though. But yeah, I, <laughs> if you if you if you listen, you're good. If you watch this, sat listen to here and watched it. If you watched a picture, intent not even a picture. <laughs> you want if you watched a color yeah, for two and a half hours. <laughs> listen to it instead. Please, yeah. Listen to it. Yeah, you can come back, but listen to it next time. <laughs> God damn. If you, if you watched a color for two hours and 22 minutes, <laughs> try listening to it instead, and you'll have a better time. You will. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a good evening. We don't have a name for this podcast. We don't really have an outro for this podcast. No. But this is your host, Austin. And to my left, Right, still. Always like, directionally confused. Exactly. Yeah, to, to, to his right is Jordan. You can find us on YouTube. We'll have this on both of our YouTube channels. Um, I will have the link to his YouTube channel in the description on my channel below and his Twitch channel in the description below. And I'm sure he'll do the same thing if he remembers to. Oh, I will. <laughs> After I get this to him, I'll probably get this to you tomorrow. Sounds good. Um, I guess I have to get ready to go to work. Yep. Peace out. Stay classy, YouTube. Bye. Good luck.